motherfucking mainstream. We live with Damien Queen, the leather face of Wisconsin. Y'all know what it is. What's going on, Damien? Yo, what's cracking, y'all? Hey, yeah. I, I expect everybody in that's listening right now to have them L's in the air right now. Hey, if, I, if, I, if I don't, if you're not doing it, I find out I'm kicking somebody's ass. Swear to God. Even if I can't see you, fuck it, out in the air for the whole interview, the whole, the whole time. <laughs> God damn it! Fuck you! Yeah. Yeah. Trying to break the fuck satanic yeah. interview. Now he for real, dog. You went for like three and a half hours, the longest satanic, interview ever. Uh, three hours and forty five no minutes. Shit. Yeah, <laughs> it was a good night. Yo, that's. Damn, that is a record. Is that like a record? We gotta check that shit out, dog. That's crazy. That's <laughs> Prosper <laughs> Sick, man. That's KR for life, man. Look at the homie. For sure. good, good shit. Mad respect, man, for him. He's like, I'll be on 15 minutes. Half an hour went by. I'll stay a couple more. Three and a half hours later. The thing with Satanic, though, man, is he is very personable. So you can sit on the phone with him and chop it up for hours. You know what I'm saying? And before you know it, fuck, you just... And three and a half hours talking to Satanic. You know what I'm saying? That's how it goes. <laughs> Go for it, easy. Well, man, we'll jump off with a question. I know we got people that's excited. <laughs> All I've heard the last couple of days is, uh... Can't wait for Damien. You know what I mean? People have been waiting to hear from me. So, uh... Yep. What's going on? So tell us about Damien and Quinn, man. I want to know a little bit about the beginning. Damien and Quinn. Um, well, what do you want to know, man? I am one half of the Misfits of Hip Hop, the most terrifying group in Wisconsin, Dark Half. Um, I'm the awkward MC, Damien Quinn, bro, the leather face of Wisconsin. I do dabs, a lot of them. And uh, actually what I heard was uh, Hex Rated did like 57 on your show last time, so I'm trying to top that, bro. Like do like 114. So <laughs> we're going to try to make that happen. I'm going to load one up. <laughs> so, let's, so let's just clarify, man. Let, let's just go ahead and back you up a little bit. You said the most terrifying group in Wisconsin. Man, I'm going to say the most terrifying group in the motherfucking underground. So, let's just go ahead and back that trade on up. <laughs> really, dog, you know, I guess um, I guess throughout the years we tried to keep it, uh, I don't, what am I trying to say, quote-unquote safe. You know, I mean, honestly, though, man, and I mean, I, I really can't speak for Juno, obviously, but I can. And I know for a fact that we were both, uh, we're fans of horrorcore, fans of underground music, you know what I'm saying? So, um... Yeah, uh, we might not have seen it like that, though. You know what I'm saying? I mean, definitely we knew, hey, in Wisconsin, we do our thing. But, you know what I'm saying, man? We, we definitely tried to uh, tried to keep it as humble as we could. You know what I'm saying? So, so I mean, hey, if, if that's how I feel, that's dope. That's dope. Oh, yeah, you definitely did a hell of a job by staying humble, man. I tell you what, the few times that I actually did get to speak, so, Gino, both of y'all, man, have been nothing but good-ass dudes. I mean, seriously, like, there wasn't, there's no, there's no uh, comparing y'all to a lot of these artists that I've came across that don't really even measure up to you guys that, that think that they're all that, you know what I mean? They're assholes. And I've came across quite a few of them, man. No, and I, and I thank you, Easy, and, uh, I mean, you know, yeah, man, I mean, everybody has their days, bro, that's why I never really try to judge an artist, you know what I'm saying, dog, because, dude, we all have bad days, and sometimes you might run into a motherfucker on a bad day, you know what I'm saying, I mean, it is what it is, but I would say 90 to 95% of the time, we try to stay, um, connected with the fans, and we try to stay open with the fans, and we try to stay, uh, like I was saying about sick earlier, we try to stay personable, you know what I'm saying, we really do, man, I mean, shit, that's the only way to be, I think, you know what I'm saying, I think the second that you disconnect with your fans, you must be fucking... Eminem or Adele or some shit, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> like, you probably, you're on that fucking level, and if you're already disconnected with your fans on the level that we're on, 
down here in the underground at Horcore, well, you're just fucking up. <laughs> For real, you, you gotta, you gotta show the ones that, uh, that make you who you are, you know what I'm saying? So, exactly. I was just talking to somebody about that the other night. We were talking about how we've opened up for all these big name artists, and um, they are, they're, they're always ghosts. I think actually me and you were talking about it. We were talking about like, we were like, we put, we were page, like ABK and Blaze and stuff. Well, maybe it wasn't you. I was talking to somebody about it. We've opened up for dudes several times, and there's a few guys that I've opened for, man. If they're ghosts, you can't even approach these dudes. Yeah, but that's, that's definitely not ABK or Blaze, though. ABK and Blaze are, are very, um, they're actually very good with that, with, uh, you know, uh, talking with their fans and signing autographs, and for real, man, like, they're, uh, I've talked to them dudes many occasions, you know what I'm saying? Just different shows oh, and shit. Yeah. You know, you know, just oh, fan oh. shit, but... Yeah, both of them dudes are super good about that. I, I, I respect both of them guys. I've opened for them. It was, it was really good occasions. But uh, anyway, back, back to you. We're going to go, um, I want to know a little bit about, like, people want to know a little bit about the pre-LSP days, man. Like, what led you uh, to LSP? Like, how did that whole correlation come about? It's, it's actually it's actually a funny story because uh, uh, I met these kids here in Kenosha and uh, fuck I don't even really remember how I, I met them um, I met them just for a mutual friend you know what I'm saying just trying to buy some weed or trying to smoke some weed and uh, I met these two kids that would always post on this forum back in the day called killmusic.com and these kids went by K-Town Killer and K-Town Strangler. And uh, they're actually my really good friends, Ryan and Kevin Lightsey. And um, they introduced me to Scum. And they showed me uh, Only Bodies Left Behind back in uh, 2000 and, fuck, what was that, 2006. It was the first time I ever heard of LSP or Scum or anything. And what was cracking was I was throwing a show at the time called The Bury the Living Show. And it was my first annual Bury the Living Show. And I just met these dudes and they were in the hardcore and they, you know, knew all the shit that I knew and we started chopping it up. And, you know, obviously they were showing me new shit like Scum and whatnot and they were like, yo, man. And they were like, yo, if, if we pay for Scum's plane ticket, will you put him on this show? And I was like, I mean, fuck, if you're going to pay for it, why not? You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's basically how it happened. They fucking paid for Scum to come out. I paid for a collab from Scum. And ever since then, the rest is history, man. And you know what's funny is that collab that I paid for from Scum never came out. Wow. Still to this is actually one Maybe one day, man. It's actually a follow-up to the album that I was promoting at the time called Bodies in My Basement, uh, 12 Demo Tracks to Stab Your Parents To. And basically what I was, I was trying to do was I was trying to follow in the footsteps of Q Strange. Because what Q Strange did was he put out the Kate Thoughts <clears throat> to try to gain some, you know, earn some money and put out a real album, which would later be Creation Execution. So I was like, well, dude, if I could do what Q did, that would be dope. If I could make like a decayed thoughts and then later make a real album. You know what I'm saying? I tried to follow the, that same pattern. So I made this, this Bodies in My Basement demo album that um, I couldn't sell for the fucking life of me. I gave so many away, but whatever, Doug. And uh, it actually did kind of help grow um, everything that's, I guess, happening today. For me and, you know, for even Dark, all that. So, can we maybe future, maybe see that on the Lobotomy album or what? No. <laughs> no, but one day, one day uh, it, it, the album was called Chronicles of a Crippled Dog. <laughs> and it was uh, an ode to uh, a wiener dog. Um, at, the, at the time, I just met my wife and... Uh, had this wiener dog that um, was crippled and it had this this fucking this kind of peg leg that would just like just like be there it wouldn't 
to do anything or move. It was just there. And Stretchy was my home girl. Like that was my homie. Uh, she passed away. Um, oh, fuck, I would say back in like 2009 or so or 10 maybe. But yeah, man, like that was my home girl. So that was like the album was like named after her, this crippled wiener dog. So it kind of goes with a crippled dog. And uh, actually, on the album it has uh, fuck. It has a track with Scum. Uh, Pogdilia Project Born Menocide um, And it has like Gino's first raps Ever Is on that album too So Maybe one day man We'll put it out we'll know, who, who knows We'll see Hey well, yeah, man That's basically That would be dope That you know, be dope when, when I first heard Scum Oh my bad bro I'm sorry No you good Good bro Oh no, I was just saying when I first heard Scum, it's funny because my homeboy, he played me the album, he played me on Bodies Left Behind, and he showed me a song that I rapped to the same beat. So of course as a rapper, naturally, I just had to start fucking, you know, puffing the chest out, like, oh, whatever, bro, you know what I'm saying, this dude's alright. So I, I kind of, I kind of listen to Scum at first, we get to whatever, bro. But then I took the album home, my boys were like, man, you just, you whatever, go listen to it. And I put that first fucking track on and it was the return featuring Bory and uh you know Doug right when Bory's voice hits you know what I'm saying it's just uh the most powerful thing I heard at that time in horrorcore music it really changed me for real so my first impression is come I was like what is this but then when I actually got to sit down with the album and listen to it I was like this dude is gonna be something and proof is in the fucking pudding man hopefully not Bill Cosby's pudding so Oh boy. <laughs> the pudding pops. Yup. <laughs> DJ Snickers loves the pudding pops. That's one of my favorite questions, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Snickers, man, uh, what do you got? Uh, what oh, kind yeah, of questions got you got over here? over here for him? I've been wanting to ask. Go for it. So, Damien, if you yeah. ever had to sign to uh, another label besides LSP, would you? And who would it be? Man, I don't, I don't know, bro. Honestly, I mean, shit, dog. I, I could never. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just gonna say I could never see me leaving LSP, dog. That's for life. I mean, I, I owe a lot to Scum, bro. A lot. Like Scum has done so much for me, dog. I can't even. Fuck, dude, we'd, we'd have the three and a half interview, three and a half hour interview going, you know? But I mean, uh, shit, I mean, dog, looking at it from like a retrospective or from an outside perspective, I mean, shit, dude, probably Magic Ninja Entertainment, dog. You know, if that, if that was an option, because, dude, they're on top of the underground right now, they're doing it, and they're about to just get bigger and bigger. But, no, I wouldn't leave LSP. I would like to work with M&E, though, more in the future with, you know, collabs and tours and shit, definitely. But, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I've always been a fucking twisted mark, though. Like, twisted, anything twisted, I just fanboy over, so, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. What, um, Rhapsodies, or should I say tapes, cassette tapes, if you're my age, did you grow up listening to? Man, the first rap tape that I ever got, which actually got me listening to rap, uh, was Bone Thugs and Harmony creeping on a come up. That was the first yeah. rap tape I ever listened to, and also was uh, Do or Die. Uh, what was the other tape that we listened to a lot? Heads or Tails, or Picture This. I think it was, uh, dude, that was actually just a single, it was, uh, uh, that was Six Million More Ways to Die, you know, I know why, I forget, like, it was that song, Six Million Ways to Die, it was just a single, though, it wasn't even nothing, we would just listen to that one song, uh, because there was this fucking record store down the block from my grandma's house, when we'd go there all the time and just get all the free samplers and shit, there'd always be free shit, and that's actually how I heard ICP for the first time, because back in 97, I had a concrete sampler tape, uh, it was like, yeah, concrete corner samplers, they were called or some shit and every month they'd have a different one with all these singles of bands that were promoting themselves and uh, on that fucking tape um, there was two songs that I couldn't stop playing and uh, one of them was fucking uh, Halls of Illusions from Insane Cloud Posse and then the other one was uh, 311 Down <laughs> okay, yeah. that's, that's awesome bro 
do or die and bone are like two of my biggest like underground inspiration not underground but my biggest inspirations when I was coming up man like yeah see that's dope man that's and, and bone still this day obviously that holds I hold you know bone dear to the heart man like the fucking feels cause yeah that was the first rap tape ever and like I said yeah I listened to bone and then you know got a little bit into the Tupac and shit and then obviously once I found ICP though it was over that's all I wanted to listen to and then got into Twisted and then heard Esham and that was it once I got into Esham and Q Strange I, I never looked back and those dudes are still to this day like my favorite rappers um of course uh king gordy and jamie madrox are twisted in that category as well but yeah dude like isham holy fuck <laughs> yeah, that's what it is man i think it's that whole midwest thing man like do or die and bone that whole midwest style that they bring and it's you know it's darker but it's still you know it's still dope right yeah. My bad, dude, I'm not on the dabs. I said I was more than Hex, and I haven't even done one, bro. <laughs> Maybe Hex is the dab master dog. All right, my bad, go ahead. No, this is no shit. We definitely have to dab on it. Talk him over here talking shit, doing nothing. All right, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, dab it up, brother, dab it up. I, I definitely have to do one, at least. All right, go ahead, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um... Man, I'm gonna see what who else can we touch right now. Um, <laughs> Come on, easy. So look, I haven't heard you talking about a name yet. What? What? We got? We got a name? Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, Damien Insane D. I mean, he used to go by Insane D. We know that. Uh, I know that. Yes, I, we may have no yes, passengers out there. Let's ask a real question. Where did the leather face of Wisconsin inspiration come from? There we go. Man, you know, actually, that's, um, I call myself the leather face of Wisconsin, but actually it's my interpretation of Ed Gein because I'm I always I'm so pissed off. That, um, and you know, hey, shout out to my homies in Texas, dog, before we even go further, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> shout out to all the Texas fans who have dark hats, all my Texas call crew, but I was always pissed that they based that story out of Texas, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I was like, well, that's not fair. It's not where it was. It was here. It was in Wisconsin. So, um, yeah. the leather face of Wisconsin is Ed Gein, man. And, and in my head, I think that, um, I'm related to Ed Gein. Some days I think I'm Ed Gein. I want to be Ed Gein so bad. Um, <laughs> you know, even, even down to like, you know, uh, you know, uh, on burying my dead mother and leaving her in the house and, you know, wearing, you know, the neighborhood girl's face. I mean, all of that, you know, and tits, face and tits. So I want to do all that, man, you know, but yeah, uh, it's just it's kind of weird. It's kind of a weird fetish. I don't know. I, I think I'm just so, um, I'm into Ed Gein's story and I'm into Ed Gein not only because he's from Wisconsin, but it's just, it's, it's, a, it's a different story, man. He didn't murder that many people, but what he did with the remains is definitely um, odd and very intriguing to me. And same with Dahmer, man. I mean, even though Dahmer was a homo, all that bullshit, whatever, you know, what he did with people was different. It wasn't, he didn't just murder him and he was on his fucking way, you know? These motherfuckers sat there and played with him, man. They played with those bodies, bro. They, they created stuff, and you know what I'm saying? Like, it's fucking wow. To, to make a, a lampshade out of somebody's skin or a belt out of nipples, that's not intriguing to you? Like, I would like to see it done. <laughs> like, is that right? Like, is there like tutorials on YouTube for that or something? I mean, I tried to look it up, there's not. <laughs> exactly. It reminds you of like the real life Otis from like a house with a thousand corpses and shit. Otis was always Otis was always making some fucked up shit, man. I got him very actually one of my favorite comedy flicks. By the he way, got a girl on the phone, not talking, and she's like a really, really big fan of yours. She actually helps run a cool shit page. And she's like, 
put yeah. in our staff chat. She's screaming over here, listening to you. She's on the phone with us. <laughs> she's screaming she inside. She screaming now? Yeah, she can hear you. She, she's on the phone with us. <laughs> she's probably over there. See, the there she is. She's blushing. I can feel it. <laughs> she's blushing right now. Are you oh. trying to read? Are you trying to read? I can see that through the phone. I feel that energy well. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. <laughs> uh, okay. So easy. I think we should laugh. Rushing over the whole act story, all those about making bouts out of nipples and stuff. That was awesome. That was cool. <laughs> that, was, that was cool. So, that was pretty good. Yeah, that was so, so our new name for her now is Nibbles. Nibbles. She's gonna be DJ Nibbles from now on. Wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. Is that, is that an upgrade? Is what was the DJ name before? Bubbles. <laughs> okay. Okay. That is, that is, an, up, that is an upgrade. Him later. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we let him choose a song bit. out, and then we're gonna come back, and we gotta do some hot seat. Okay. Okay. Uh, so baby, we got your uh. So we're on the mood hook, ready to go, man. We want you to pick the first song we play off there, man. What's your what's your favorite track off that uh, EP? Fuck. Um, shit, man. My favorite track off there has to be uh, Give It Up, Son, featuring Young Ghost the Raven De La Vega, man. That's my jam. For sure. There you go. So, uh, DJ Snickers, go ahead and spin that shit. No. Let him uh, tell us a little bit about the track, then I'll spin it. How's that sound? <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> and actually, um, shit, dog, I fucking, that track came about with, uh, I was listening to Cedar one day, believe it or not, um, because the road manager that we used to fucking fuck with, uh, Uncle Joe, shout out to Uncle Joe if you're listening anywhere, um, Joe was uh, part of Libsba Entertainment, and uh, he was the reason that we got the tour, man, with uh, Boondocks' Underground Resurrection Tour and uh, SKR's Children of the Grave Tour. So, uh, he always listened to Cedar, dude, that was his shit. But there was this one song in particular that he would listen to that I thought was fucking dope, and uh, we sampled that shit for the song you're about to hear now. So, I forgot what the song was called, actually. Oh, yeah. So it's a secret song, no. We'll be right back. Shut up, Luke. You hush over Hold there, on. 606. Hold on. Don't, Hold on. don't make me tell him about the 606 GIF. I mean, you can tell him about what you want, but you want to get out done. Okay. <laughs> but, uh,. Yeah, big shout out to Joe. That's my homie right there, Joe from Libza. I was actually uh, one of his clients for a little while, man. Right before all oh, no shit. Yeah. yeah. Wow, um, no shit. Yeah, man. Don't let do, bro. I, I miss Joe for real. I wish he was still uh, in the industry, man. I wish he was still doing shit because, uh, you know, outside of music, he was actually a really fun dude to just be around and... Um, Obviously, he's been through a lot, man, so he had some wisdom, he had some shit to say, and, uh, pretty smart, if you just listen to the man, for sure, it does, so, so around, man, but, you know. When we get out, when we play your song here in a second, I'll tell you about that. Be right back. What? Boop, boop. And we are live on Underground Wicked Radio. It is time for Easy 606 Hot Seat. Time to make the uh, artist sweat a little bit. You guys know what that starter means? Easy 606 Hot Seat. Go for it, homie. Don't forget to bury the mainstream, motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Bury the mainstream. It's Wednesday. I forgot. <laughs> God damn it. She was trying to fuck you over, man. Damn right. But like I was just telling uh, D, man, but I've been talking to, to Kurt, the homie over at Horrorcore uh, Radio and Horrorcore Magazine, and uh, we might see some Barry the Mainstream on Horrorcore Radio here coming up. So we might have, we yeah, might have Barry the Mainstream in two different places. Hell yeah. So we're we expanding. But anyway, um... The hot seat, 
So what we go, what we do in the hot seat, do is we touch all kinds of topics, man. Like it might be current events, it could just be some opinionated questions. We just kind of ask you some crazy shit. Okay, word, right. word, word. All right. So D, we know you're a big fan of the dabs. Yes. What? If you came down into a situation in life, would you give? Would you have to give up dabs, or you'd have to give up sex? Which one do you want to choose? Oh fuck, man! For real? <laughs> uh, <laughs> shit, dog. I mean, I love pussy, bro, but. Uh, Rosa Palms has always been a faithful friend, hog. I don't know, man. You know my dad is. <laughs> Fuck, dude. <laughs> that is, yeah, that is the hot seat, dog. Um, I, um. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, bro. I don't know if I can honestly answer that, dog. I, I would have to. A uh, part of me, a part of me is like. Part of me wants to say I'd give a pussy, but then the, the the manhood in me is just screaming homo, bro. It's like homo, like you know what I'm saying. No offense to any any case out there. I'm sorry. I'm just saying like that's that's happening to me right now, you know. So I mean, uh, shit. Um, I don't know, bro. I'd, I'd have to. I'd have. I don't know, bro. I'd have to give up the pussy, bro. I could jerk off, bro. I could look at magazines and stuff. I can't give up my dabs, bro. I love getting high. But no, let me take that back, dog. I can't give up the pussy, bro. I'm gonna have to give up the dabs, dog. So, I guess that's what's you know, <laughs> I'm gonna fight with myself for the next five minutes on air. Is that cool with you? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you said, you said Rosie Palms is always with a good friend. <laughs> but that still counts as sex. That's called, um, self pleasure. Right, yeah. man. So, I mean. Yeah, nah, man, I guess I just have to give up the dads, bro. But let me tell you something, dog. There's going to be a part of me that's dead inside for the rest of my life. That would be for sure, you know? Oh, man. It would be... It would be a definitely... Uh, a def it would be a different day, man, I'll tell you that. Like, man, I listen to some of your insights from the insane shows, man, when I get a chance. And I tell you what, man, y'all think I have them. It's definitely something else. I love it. <laughs> yeah, man. Shout out to Kurt Ewing and uh, Horrorcore Radio Live. You know, for giving us a platform to do that, dog. Insight for the Insane is definitely a... Uh, it is something different, man. Like, you know, it's not just your typical online radio show. I mean, uh, there's a lot of uh, shenanigans that goes down, that's for <laughs> sure. So, no, it is your typical online radio show, but we do a lot of dabs. So, <laughs> <laughs> lots and lots of dabs. <laughs> Oh, uh, hell yeah. So, you deserted on the island for five years by yourself. And you can only take two albums ever made. What two albums are you taking with you? Fuck. Um, dude, that is a hard one, too. I'd have to say only two. Hey man, I'm gonna say my my first two, but then I'm gonna have to put a maybe category. I'm sorry, bro. But the two that I would definitely take would probably have to be um, uh, Esham Closed Casket and uh, House of Crazy Season of the Pumpkin for sure. But Creation Execution would might have to be in there too. So if for some reason one of those got lost, and Creation Execution just showed up. That's what's up, dog. So, I think, yeah, that's a hard one. So, definitely those first two, though. Closed Casket and Season of the Pumpkin, those are classic. Hell yeah. All right. Okay, presidential candidates, man. Who, who would you like to see take over this fucked up country of ours? Are you a, uh, a Donald Trump supporter, a Bernie Sanders, or, or what's going on? Man, I don't really give a fuck about politics, to be honest with you, Doug. Like, I don't, for real, I don't even think it matters if we vote or not, dude. There's some other hidden agenda. There's some Illuminati bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really don't think, you know, there's there's something else. I'm probably going to get fucking snuffed for saying this shit right now, actually. 
you mm. know. But I mean, um, if I if if I'm gonna be brainwashed by somebody, I, I do kind of like that Bernie Sanders dude's uh, views. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, I really don't. Know. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I hope that I hope that, that dude was gonna legalize marijuana though, all over the United States. So if I had to like choose one to vote, I guess it would be that dude. Am I gonna vote? Probably not. I get really high and I forget about shit like that. Like, <laughs> and then everybody's walking around with stickers, and I'm like, what the fuck's going on? What is this? Like, we voted to. I'm like, oh shit, yeah. Oh, oh shit, yeah. Fuck, I forgot. <laughs> Fuck the government. <laughs> like you said, it's Illuminati, I mean, all day. That's all, that's all it is. If that dude's gonna, that dude's gonna legalize me, I wanna know if that's one of the things he's fighting for, then go ahead, Bernie. Go get him. Yeah, Bernie's cool, man. He's just old as fuck. I'm just, I'm kind of scared. I got him. Whatever. <laughs> that motherfucker might die, it's like, real soon. <laughs> You know what I mean? I mean, I don't know, maybe I didn't, like, when, when Obama was going for president, maybe I didn't, like, maybe I wasn't listening close enough, but I was under the assumption that we were getting free health care, and I voted for that. I was like, yeah, free health care. It's like fucking Canada up in here, dog. This is going to be dope. It didn't, it didn't go down like that. And I voted for that cat twice. And basically, after that, I was like, yeah, I ain't, I'm not doing that again. So... <laughs> Yeah, they definitely got us on that one, you, you sneaky, sneaky little fella. And I was like, did, did I listen to him? Is that, I swear, that's kind of what sold me, you know what I'm saying? I was like, free health care, fuck yeah. Hey, it is free health care, as long as you want, as long as you want government assistance. Right. <laughs> so I guess it is for something. Yeah, if you're, if you're working, nah, you're getting raped. Definitely. And that's not what it that's not what was presented to us. I thought it was supposed to be free health care for everybody, but like I said, that's you know what that's old shit, bro. You know what? It's two thousand sixteen. I'm doing dabs. If Bernie Sanders gets in office, I hope to do a dab with him maybe. So I guess maybe I am fucking getting political. Maybe I am for Bernie Sanders, bro. All for the marijuana clause. Did you, did you say Colonel Sanders? I am for Colonel Sanders, dog. If he gets in the office with that new hot and spicy chicken, oh yeah, dog, I'm with you. Now here's the problem with that hot and spicy chicken, though. Check this out. Is I ate it twice in one week, all right? To be honest, I did. I was like, that's good, I'm going back. But it took me like three days to actually get that shit out of my system. Literally, dog, and I don't know if that's like too much information maybe for the listeners, but my asshole was on fire. But not the day after, like you think it would be. It was like fucking three days later. Weird, right? So that long in digestion. Maybe something's wrong with me. Maybe I should go to the doctor. I'm gonna try it one more time. We will see. So if like my asshole doesn't burn the next day, it takes three days later. Then I know it's the hot and spicy chicken. You know, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know. I would try to check, but it's definitely on the agenda. But I'm not, I'm not much of a hot shit. I'm pretty much a pussy when it comes to that. But I do got a home job. I'm all about hot shit away. I'm all about Popeyes. Fuck KFC. I've been screaming that for years. KFC ain't our shit. But they, they Hell no. told me on that hot and spicy chicken. I had to try it. And it was pretty good. It's better than anything else there, so. But fuck them. And if Colonel Sanders gets in office, at least this fucking beautiful um, country will be in a better direction. So, there you go. Fuck it. So, uh, I want to know, back to some baby Queen business, I want to know what has been your favorite project that you've released so far? Damn, dog. I know that's not hard, bro. I, I would obviously have to say Graveyard Blues, but, dude, making that album was so stressful, it's even hard to say that. But maybe that's just what an album is supposed to be. I don't fucking know, you know what I'm saying? But I know for a fact that um, Gino and I wanted to, to damn near just fucking kill ourselves from the time we started that album to the time it came out. Like, it was a very, like, it was fucked, man. Like, very stressful time. And, um, I don't know, man, but 
the result, the end result of that, all that pain, all that frustration, all that shit, nothing. It's a beautiful you. record, bro, and something that uh, is now timeless, man. Even though that record you know, came out only back in 2012, it's already considered a classic to a lot of people, man. So I'm mean, well, that's humbling, dog. That's something shit. When me and that dude was in this fucking room in the Witches Den studio making that fucking album, we never thought it would get a response like that, bro. Never, dog, because it's not that we weren't confident in what we were doing, but we wanted to be just as good as the Twisteds and the Prozacs and the King Gordys and, you know what, the shit that was popping at that time. You know what I'm saying? And we wanted to be just as good as them cats and we really looked up to them and their production and, you know, I mean, necessarily not, and especially not Gino, not that he looked up to them, like, musical-wise. They weren't really musical influences for him as much as they were for me, but at the same time, though, we looked up to them and their grind and their hustle and we wanted to be that you get what i'm saying so i mean yeah dog it was just like we just it, we didn't feel like we were doing good enough you get what i'm saying so we we're making graveyard blues we're like fuck man you know we just ah uh, we're, we're not you know we didn't know if we were getting it or not but hey it speaks for itself years later man so that's crazy you get what i'm saying exactly. we got a caller on the line easy <laughs> Caller yeah. on the line, go ahead. Ask a couple questions. Yo, what's good, Damien? It's DJ Crook. Yo, what's good, bro? What's going on? What's good, Easy? What's up, man? <laughs> chilling, chilling. So, um, I don't know what all got covered yet. Niggas just wanted me to ask some questions, so, um... You know I'm going to throw you under the bus, man. I got to. Yeah, yeah, I know you are. are. Um, out of all the collabs you've done, Damien, who do you think, who do you think you've done the best track with? You know what I'm saying? Like, who do you think you collab the best with? Collab the best with? Or uh, what is my favorite? Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, um, who do you think, you know what I'm saying? Like, you hit it off well with, you know what I'm saying? To where you think it was the, the, just like the dopest track you've done with a collab on some, with somebody. Man, that's a, that's a hard one to answer because obviously I'd have to say, um, uh, you know, my sister Razakel and my brother Scum and Dope Fiend. Obviously, if you listen to Dark Half, you hear a lot of Razakel with Dark Half, a lot of Scum with Dark Half and Dope Fiend. Uh, we worked well with those artists, um, very well with those artists. Uh, oh, Monster Squad too was a group. We, we didn't have a lot of songs, but we only had a couple songs. So, like I said, if you look at the history of Dark Half, though, those three artists we have multiple songs with because we did work with them so well. And those three artists will be on the last Dark Half album for sure. Like that, that's that has to be. But I mean, overall, like my favorite collab though uh, is uh, Taxidermy featuring uh, the ROC and Mastermind of Nodis Graveyard Blues. Oh, yeah. The ROC. Uh, being from House of Crazies, Mastermind being from Nottis. I mean, bro, that's Detroit hip hop. That's the wicked shit. And that's what I grew up yeah. And you know what I'm saying? So to me, that's like, Fuck yeah. oh, God, that was an all star track, bro. That's the ROC of House of Crazies and Mastermind of Nottis, bro. Like, I step back yeah, and get that. Yeah, like, yeah that's pretty oh. fucking dope. Actually, Amazing. I actually think I've heard that song. Yeah, thank you, man. That's off the Graveyard Zone, man. Oh uh, yeah, oh uh, yeah. That uh, shit is actually pretty dope. I actually have a homie of mine that's with me right now. He definitely listens to Dark Half and he fucks with you guys and whatnot, so I'm gonna put him on the phone and just say what's up real quick. What? Hey, we oh on. shit. What was that though, dog? That was like opening the gates of hell or something. Like, hey, I, mean, I just wanted to say dark hell was awesome. Like, hey, man. Hell <laughs> 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 no. Is the homie on the line? Is that is that Iris? Hey, what's up? No, I'm one of Iris's homies. My name's Dylan. Dylan, what's good, though? Uh, I just want to let you know that, uh, I love Dark Hat, man. 
Thank you. Hello, Dutch. Yeah. You guys rock, yeah. man. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, man. Thank you, man. Rest in peace, Gino, bro. All day. Hey, great, homie. Let's go ahead and take, let's go ahead and take, a, go ahead and take a little bit of time to uh, go ahead and plug that, man. If y'all, right now, y'all need to go. Actually, I think you might have to wait a few days. I think they might be sold out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, first day. First day, baby. Awesome. Yeah. But, Scott said that there will be more up, I think he said maybe next week. So y'all need to run to the Grill Hop Shop, grab that, um, you know, cult shit, album, man, A Beautiful Curse. Get it while you can, yeah. and I think it's going to be a classic. You know, like... <laughs> Dog, what a what a what a beautiful thing! What a what a just I can, I don't even know how to describe it. Words can't even uh, describe what the feeling was, what everybody was feeling at LSP the day that that pre-order went up and it sold out the first fucking day, man. I mean that's you know what I'm saying, dog. Our brothers, uh, it, it just like I said, it just shows you for a fact that um, our brother was a leader in this genre. He was a cult leader, and he is someone that will never be forgotten, dog. His legacy will live on forever. And and selling, dude, he's all sold a lot of, and I'm not trying to sit here and talk shit or whatever. I mean, you you know, motherfucker get butt hurt or whatever, but, dog, he all sold a lot of motherfuckers, dog, in one day. You know what I'm saying? Probably half of the horrorcore genre, dog. You know what I'm saying? The underground horrorcore, under, under, underground. You know what I'm saying? I mean, dog, that's fucking, it's mind-blowing so it's it's definitely uh it's beautiful and at the same time for me though it's it is sad man because we are celebrating um my brother's life and his legacy but it's it's sad to me that he's just not here to see it man because uh oh man he <laughs> thought he wouldn't he wouldn't have even known how to take this you know what i'm saying he really wouldn't have man he would have been like dog You've been fucking mind fucked, just like all of us are. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's, that's definitely some good shit, though. Definitely. And I, um, I appreciate the hell out of all the supporters out there that went out and uh, and caught that on day one and really showed out. Cause that, like, like you said, man, that made a hell of an impression on a lot of people. Oh, for sure. Not mine the first minute. I. That's what's up though, the first minute. Oh, you hear that? Yeah. I mean, shit, if I'm not mistaken, it was like in 10 minutes those dog tags were sold out, or say, probably even less. First five or 10, something like that. Just ridiculous numbers, bro. Ridiculous. Bro, and, and it's, it's, it's well deserved, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Garrett, Garrett Erskine, uh, put his heart and, and soul into this music. He bled for this music. And that's just fucking honest, dog. Blood, sweat, and tears. You know what I'm saying? I know that's, that's an old saying. Some might think it's corny. No, it's real, bro. Blood, sweat, and tears he put into music. He loved music. Not just horrorcore. Not just, you know what I'm saying? He loved fucking music. He loved creating music. So, I mean, dog, the fact that the response that this album is getting, man, is it's, it's well-deserved, bro. It's definitely... It, it kind of goes to show, man. It's like how hard when you put in work and you work hard, that come out of it, man. And that's just what I was trying to say earlier. So sad that he's just not able to see that, man. But you know what? He is still able to see that. So exactly, exactly. That, but but he's yeah, he's walking up, man. I agree. Um. So, as far as Dark Half album, man, like, I know, I watched an interview that you did, and you pretty much said that until it's completely ready, you're not even worried about releasing it. So, do you have maybe a little bit of a time frame on that, or, or, or you know, you maybe, album? yeah. Shit, man, yeah, um... I'm not really too sure, bro. Honestly, I mean, I understand where you're coming from, man. Wait. Well, yeah, I was just gonna say, like, obviously, I know I can't wait forever, but the time has to be right, and I want to release it. I want to make sure that the the music is fucking high quality. 
You know what I'm saying? It's it's that fucking, it's up to them fucking LSP standards, dog. High quality, good graphics. I want to do a documentary, um, a dark half documentary from, you know, day one to, you know, uh, up to 18 of 2015, you know, the documentary will talk about, you know, uh, everything from then on to then, and then uh, uh, a couple, shoot a couple music videos and uh, all that, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's it's gonna take a little bit, dog, and it's something that I, I said I wanna make sure, well, like I said, I wanna make sure it's right. I don't wanna just fucking put it out there and be like, hey, you guys go, here's the last Dark Half album. Nah, man, it's, got, it's gotta be special because this is the last Dark Half album. It's, uh, Closing the book on, on a, a terrifying, beautiful story. Beautiful, terrifying. Now, I wouldn't say, I mean, it's closing the book per, per se, because you're still there, man. Like, Dark Cat's going to live with you, Jimmy Oak, forever. But, yeah. man, I mean, the legacy lives on, you know what I'm saying? Like, Dark Half lives on forever, the music lives on forever. Um, I mean, down the road, I'm sure I'll still probably do tributes to Dark Half, you know, uh, possibly. I mean, uh, I don't think anytime soon I will, but I'm sure down the road it's going to happen. I'll I think that would be... Yeah, I think that would be, like, super dope. Even if you only do, like, one big tribute a year, just make it, like, an annual type thing, man. That's, that's not a bad idea. See, that's what I'm saying. That's something I could do. Um, that's obviously very hard. It's very hard on the mentals to, you know, go out there and do something like that. I mean, uh, to be honest, I don't know how I did uh, Gino's Memorial Show, the 10th Annual Bury the Living, 2nd Annual uh, Cold Shit Christmas. I don't know how I did them shows without just bawling, bro. You know what I'm mean, saying? Like, it's like... I watch the YouTube videos, man. I'm just sitting here watching you like... Damn, this man, you you were strong as fuck, dude, and that's much respect. Like everybody else was, uh, everybody else was uh, on the ground, man, and you're like you were holding that shit, you were holding them for it, man. Not just some point in time, Doug. You got to be strong for others. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'm not strong all the time, bro. <laughs> Obviously, but um, that point in time, you know what I'm saying? Representing Dark Half, uh, representing the life and legacy of Garrett Erskine, you know, call shit. Yeah, Doug, uh, you know, had to stay strong. Had to. But it is hard. I mean, that's no fucking lie. I mean, obviously. So, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's not something that I want to um, continue to do all the time. But, yeah, like, annually, once a year? Yeah, for sure, dog. I can see that happen. For sure. And I, and I definitely need to be... I will be at those motherfuckers for sure. With, with the fucking... Uh, yeah, hell uh, on. yeah, actually, we're, we're throwing a show this Sunday, man. The Fuck Love Show here in Kenosha, Wisconsin, man. This Sunday on Valentine's Day. Uh, at the American Legion Bar, Kenosha, Wisconsin. All ages, five bucks at the door, and it's all it's all local cats. You know what I'm saying? But it's uh, it, it's it's a start of building the cult crew, man, and, and getting uh, getting the cult crew assembled for what's going to come in 2017. And uh, well, y'all are just going to have to keep your ears open. If you already know my my phone lines are open, brother. Man, let me help y'all lead. I got you. Same way, man. Whether it's radio, artist, or whatever, man, I'm down to rock some shit. You know, y'all, LSP's family to me. Hell yeah, man, that's what's up. So, uh. And hey, you know, you've got Oh, yeah, we got that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's go the other way, man. Um, we had a kind of we kind of brought down in there a little bit and had to pay our respects to the homies. Uh, what was that noise? All right, my I was just wondering the same thing. What the heck was that? <laughs> <laughs> that but uh, so talks about gore fest, man. Like I'm hoping this year will be my first gore fest, man, and I'm excited as fuck. Like I was, I have been told that it is the the gathering, the gathering of the horrorcore community. Yeah, man, it's it's the epitome of the horrorcore scene, bro. That is Gorefest. Um, it is definitely the gathering. Uh, I mean, there's no camping or you know 
um, people running around naked on, on Maui in ecstasy, but I'm mean, pretty damn fucking close, dude. You know, um, <laughs> that's definitely gore fest, dog. I mean, yeah, no, I mean, all jokes aside, dog, it's definitely uh, the pinnacle, I'd say, uh, of horrorcore. You know what I'm saying? For shows. Um, and it's definitely a show that I, I'd say that if you're an up and coming um, underground or hardcore artist or just a hardcore artist in general, yeah, you want to be a part of Gorefest. Like, you definitely do. I don't think there's anywhere in the country in our genre of music where you're going to play in front of four to six hundred or more people. There's just not. And that's what Gorefest or Poe is about four to six hundred a year. You know what I'm saying? And shit, dog. <laughs> I don't really know, you know what I'm saying? Unless it's obviously the ICCs and SIDS and, sh you know, shit like that. You're not pulling 400, 500, 600 kids. You're just not. So, yeah, man, Gorefest is it's the place to be. It's a fucking party, dog. It's not just a show, you know what I'm saying? I mean, dog, pff, I'm fucked up at Gorefest, bro. Fucked up. Mm. Motherfucker, so I got put in the hospital because I took a dab before at Gorefest, which is not the case. I actually, and I'll fucking say it, I'll say it here, and I'll say it again. I actually drank at least, and I'm going to say at least, I'm not joking, 20 Jaeger bombs that night. I just kept making whoever was behind the bar give me Jaeger bombs. And then, yeah, dude, it had to be at least 20. And then I started drinking other people's drinks that were around me. Like, I remember grabbing Icarus's drink and just drinking it. I don't know what he was drinking I have no clue but um, I proceeded to uh, vomit all over myself by the end of the night and uh, Gino called shit and Q Strange helped me change um, out of my shirt and into a new one which was an extra medium uh, Mission 16 shirt that Beast uh, lended me so <laughs> so well, what's funny about this though is that um, I wake up in the hospital the next morning and I'm like, at first I thought I was in jail. You know, you kind of open your eyes and I look around and I'm like, where the fuck am I? Oh fuck, I'm in jail, dude. And then I woke up a little more and I was like, oh, wait, I'm in the hospital. Okay, well that's not that bad, but what the fuck, dude? Did I die? What the fuck am I here, you know? And I was like, yo, why am I here? And they're like, yeah, you were unresponsive in the hotel lobby. So, oh, well, that's cool. So, yeah. I gotta give a shout out next. to someone that would uh, call in if he could, Mr. Oogie Boogie. He uh, is a bouncer at the pit in Colorado Springs. There's a Greenland. Mr. Oogie Boogie? Mr. Oogie Boogie. Another good rapper. And it's all quiet now. Fine, I'm gonna ask a question. <laughs> Easy as that. Over there. Yep. Mr. Oh, my, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. on that, who do you think is the biggest person you've got to open up for? Shit, dog. Uh, uh, um. I guess nowadays to nowadays, you know, quote unquote, to the industry standards of now, it would be Tech Nine. Um, but this past October, or actually this past November, um, because of my homie Bloody Ruckus, shout out to Bloody Ruckus, a little beast fastest rapper in Wisconsin, um, I got to open up for the Insane Clown Posse. I always wanted to do that, man, and it was never an opportunity um, that came about. And uh, we finally got to make that happen. So, I mean, yeah, between ICP and Tech 9 I guess that would be, you know what I'm saying? Mad respect to Shaggy, um, Shaggy Tudor. He did a radio drop for me, and he probably fucked with me for about a good 15 minutes before, before he finally did a good radio drop. That's pretty good. <laughs> well, that's dope, though. You get some good fucking extra shit out of that? Oh yeah, I've got uh, like, I think 12,000 views on that video. So, so I mean, did you get any extra clip, extra like, extra shit, you know, besides the, the radio edit, like, or the, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, they're on, my, uh, the, they're on the radio in rotation. I got one from him, Violent J, and Sugar Slam. Well, that's 
What's up, man? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, man, it was, that was definitely an honor opening up for ICP. And, and yeah, like I said, so ICP Tech 9, you know, and that's what the industry standards now. Because obviously Tech 9 is fucking huge, man. He's everywhere. You know what I'm saying? So. But when we opened up for him, actually, it was back in, fuck, uh, 2010. So, I mean, he was still doing his thing, but he wasn't even as big as he was now. So, yeah. So, Damien, so what you were trying to tell yeah. me is, when uh, when I attend Gore Fest this year and I jump off stage, the first round of messed out hookers is on you, right? <laughs> The, the first round of what? Messed out hookers. Um, I mean, it could be. And how are you jumping off stage, bro? Are you literally, are you in stage dive? Are you going to take your shirt off in stage dive? Oh, <laughs> hey, if you're buying the hookers, bro, if you're, do, if you're buying the hookers, bro, I'll do the worm off the stage. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know, man. Like, I don't really know Denver like that. And I don't know if you want any Denver hookers, bro. That's probably, like, that's just calling for STDs. But, hey, keep yourself very protected. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? We'll figure something out. <laughs> Easy. I'll go in half on that. Pay for the night, man. Hand jobs, bro. Fuck it, you know? If you promise to <laughs> job 606 Jeff all over you before you jump into the crowd. I'm sure a hand job couldn't be more than 20 bucks, bro. And if it is, that's a lot. I'm like, 20 bucks, that's a lot. If I'm not paying like fucking 10, I'm like, I do this shit myself. What do you need, 20 bucks? That's insane. <laughs> You know what's funny though, dude, is I told, uh, I'm doing a show with, uh, Diabolic and Hacks on the 27th of this month. Well, I told, Diabolic is my dude. And I told Diabolic, I'm like, hey, man, you better have them damn H3 hookers waiting on me. He's like, man, he's like, I got the, he said, I got the first 20. <laughs> Word, word. Well, hopefully that's more than an HJ. Hopefully that's two HJs on that 20. Hey. Yeah, I mean, them A Street hookers in Portsmouth, man, they got $5 blade bounds. What are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> had, had three risky that's very risque, my dude. <laughs> 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 No, nah, but yeah, shout out, shout out to God by the monster, man. I don't, I don't know if he's still tuned in or if k is tuned in, but if y'all tuned in, shout out. Oh, God by might be tuned in. What's up, God by You think you heard me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he might have, man. I didn't talk to him about it. He said he was going to check it out. <laughs> dude, man, uh, back in the day, uh, Gino and I started a sub-label to LSP called Jonestown. Um, it, it lasted for about three months, but uh, Diabolic was under Jonestown, man, and when it folded, dude, Diabolic was like one of the only motherfuckers that put in work. I mean, every day put in work, so uh, yeah, we definitely tried to, you know, we was like, yo, man, we're going to get you signed to LSP, dog. At least try to. And uh, that's just his. But now he's already done with that and moved on to Axe, and that's dope. Moved on to Axe, and what's crazy is he moved on to Axe, so that's where he started. So, he may be the first thing. And that's good, though, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I definitely dig uh, Alazulu and the Axe movement, so that's fucking dope. Halloween Snicker Deck. I got a good drop from them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Joey Black. Yeah, Joey Black. Yeah. That is that is horrible, dog. Please go to your your local uh fuck <laughs> your local clinic. That is not a good thing. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's over there easy. And uh, that, that's fucking hilarious. But yeah, we were talking about uh not to be a uh, fucking dead horse, but we were talking about graveyard blues earlier, man. You're talking about one of the one of the, my personal top ten underground uh, albums of all time, man. Like Graveyard Blues is definitely right up in the top ten for sure. My little album is it's one, of the, it's, it's one of those albums you can put in the C D player and just let it go. Like, it's not one of the albums that you just listen to two tracks and you're done with it, you know? 
Right. That's about the only man. I mean, that's the only Hell yeah, the taxidermy, tempting torture, walking to my grave, fucking, uh, I think rape's on there too, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, yeah. man. Right. Well, I mean, that was the song that openly popped us off, bro, was rape. Um, I mean, in Wisconsin, we always kind of did our thing, you know what I'm saying? We, we was, you know, but when rape came out, we definitely see things start to change for us a little bit. If you get what I'm saying, like, we started getting more support around here. And, yeah, man, the, and that's crazy. And, dog, I never told nobody this story. I'm going to tell you here first. Very the mainstream. But rape, um, maybe, I don't know, we might have said this on this. So I can't say that, but I don't think we did. But Gino, when he first made rape, uh, he came to me with a hook, man, and it was... <laughs> He's, re he's, you know, singing the hook out and, he, you know, rapping his verse and he's like, man, check this out. And he said, try to understand, I'll love you where you stand. And I was like, I looked at him and we kind of looked at each other and we had this little awkward stare down for a little bit and it was like, dog, I don't know if that's going to work. <laughs> like that's, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're trying to kind of hold an image here and I want to kind of lean more towards a darker horrorcore image. And um, I was like, you know, we're talking about it. And he's like, well, what am I supposed to say? And uh, being funny, just as a joke, I was like, why don't you say rape you where you stand? And he was like, yeah, I like that. <laughs> At the time, I was on psychopathic record so hard that I wanted us to be signed to Psychopathic. That was always the goal for Dark Half was to sell out to, not the mainstream, but to sell out to, I guess, what some would consider mainstream underground. Uh, Suburban Noise Records was popping off at the time, Strange Music, and of course on the top, um, in my eyes, was Psychopathic Records. So, I, and you know, I was definitely, man, I was like, dude, if we can get signed to Psychopathic, we fuck. You know, that's what I thought. But, uh, uh, so at the time, I'm like, nah, man, you know, maybe we shouldn't say the whole rape thing. I was playing, and he's like, you know, I talk, we're going to say it. And I was like, all right. And look, it popped off. <laughs> it is what it is, dog. So, and another funny thing about that is the beat is actually Nirvana's Rape Me. It's sampled from Nirvana's Rape Me, but it's just sped up. I uh, knew it. I dropped I knew the beat up. Yeah. You ready to go? Rape I knew that shit was that sounded familiar as hell. But, uh, a lot of people know that man dropping knowledge tonight, dude. The dabs are hitting me hard, bro. About, do another. Two three, about two or three years ago, I was doing, about when that song first came out, I was doing another radio show at the time. I'm not going to mention any names and give them any publicity, but... <laughs> I had played that track on there all the fucking time, Rape. I over, rape and Scum, I played over and over and over. Yes, you did. And, yeah. <laughs> and some of the some of the feedback I got from that track, man, some of these people were just like, are you serious? Like, really, would you would rape a bitch? Fuck yeah, bitch, I'll rape your ass. <laughs> You know what's crazy is we tried not to be the rape guys. Like, we're like, no, man, we we not really down with that. Like, that's Mars's thing, bro. Like, Mars, we're not trying to steal your gimmick, dog. Like, that is Hannity Mars. You can have the rape thing. That wasn't, you know? I mean, fuck, you know, didn't have to rape a bitch. Fucking bitches, dude. They just looked at you, you know? Like, yeah. I mean, shit, you know? Fuck. Ain't nobody rape nobody over here. So we thought it. We thought it. I mean, I, mean, I don't know. Stuff. Bubbles is over there giggling to that. I'm in the dick every day because we're rapping about rape. So what? <laughs> so, so you a fuck I play, I'm playing third of at the stake and rape back to back. Motherfuckers think that I done. Motherfuckers think that I done fell off the fucking wagon. <laughs> what a great, what a great playlist, dog. Uh, I mean, even two songs, whatever, bro. <laughs> You talking about rape? Burn the man to steak, then I'd have like Smalls one or something in there. <laughs> Some system of the down, oh, remember right? Yeah. Hey, I throw rock in there all the time. Yeah. Hey bro, nothing's wrong with a little system, man, for sure. So I got a question. If I remember right, haven't you shared the stage with Tommy Necro? Yeah, 
Oh, man. Um, actually, I got to share the stage with Tommy um, here in the Wicked Wisconsin a couple times. Uh, one time for Gino's Memorial, and then another time he was on Insane Poetry's Butcher Knife Music Tour, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, yeah, man. Uh, Tommy's that dude, man. Tommy Macro and me uh, definitely get together, like to fucking do the dabs, smoke, talk about horror movies. Small world, or me, him, easy. I used to uh, DJ for another radio about a couple years ago. Shit. Yeah, we were all on the same radio there a couple years ago. That's what I've been saying. Okay, word. Is, is Tommy ever talked about getting back on doing some radio shit or not? He should, honestly. He was good at it. Yeah, man, for sure. Dog, that'd be dope. And then y'all back at it and on a, you know, a bigger platform. I would say no. I'd, yeah, the scene's dope. It's legit to me, man. It's legit to me. We're having a good time. Exactly. It's all that matters. <laughs> Bubbles is definitely so, having a good time. So, speaking of horror movies, I'm a big horror movie person myself. I often consider myself the uh, Michael Myers of hip hop. But, uh,. What's, name some of the classic horror flicks, man. I want to know. I want to know some of your favorites. Man, uh, dog, I, I fucking just did an interview recently uh, from my homie Robbie the Rummy and uh, the Nappy J show, man. And uh, they asked the same question, man. And I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to answer the same, bro, for sure. Uh, Evil Dead is <laughs> actually Evil Dead and Exorcist were the two movies that actually scared me, kid. Like, there wasn't really movies that scared me, but those two fucking flicks actually freaked me out. Evil Dead freaked me out so bad, I wouldn't even go to the bathroom, and I had a fucking piss, and I think I held it forever until, like, eventually I knew I didn't anymore, and I had to just, like, be brave and go and turn that light on in the bathroom. <laughs> like, that's how bad it fucking freaked me out. Like, Evil Dead was, was some shit. Um... What's up, dog? I like, uh, yeah, shout out to my boy, uh, Mr. Kilcher, first of all. Uh, Mr. Kilcher of Six Side, Third Shift Entertainment. Um, dog, he is like the fucking godfather. Uh, I call him the godfather of horrorcore and the godfather of horror movies. Like, that guy knows so much fucking, he has so much knowledge about horror movies, it's incredible. From American horror movies to Japanese to Italian, whatever, dog. And, uh, he showed me these flicks, and the ones that always stood out to me that are my favorite um is uh, the august underground series i don't know if y'all ever heard of august underground um it's a dude named fred vogel he's a director out of pittsburgh pennsylvania and uh, back in the day they used to be toe take pictures now they're known as toe take inc and uh what he did is he made these movies called august underground there's three of them um august underground august underground mortem and august underground penis my favorite is the second one mortem and basically what it is, it's just like fake snuff films. It's basically this dude just kind of fucking showing off his, uh, his, um, you know, prosthetic skills and, uh, special effects skills. And it's so dope. Oh, cutting people up and they're gutting people and all that shit. It looks so fucking real. It looks so real that you would think you're actually watching the snuff film for sure so um August Underground Mortem is definitely in that category uh another uh, another movie called Red Sin Tower that Fred Vogel made um that would have to be the up to, um Friday, Friday the 13th part 3 is one of my favorite all time I'll, I'll fuck I would have to say that's like probably my first and Jason Voorhees is my favorite American horror movie character of all time for sure mm -hmm. So, like, part three in 3D where he finds his own mask. So, so that's fucking legit. Or, or finds the hockey mask for the first time, I meant to say. Um, and then shit, yeah, man. I mean, uh, uh, a Japanese flick called The Untold Story is really dope, man. It's about this, uh, this fucking dude that's a smuggler and a hustler. And he hustles this dude out of his restaurant and uh, kills the motherfucker and cooks him and then continues to kill other customers and cook them and make uh, barbecue pork buns out of them. So that movie's fucking legit. And then the last on the list I would say would be um, Aftermath. Aftermath, the 
a Spanish film about a uh, mortician that fucks that body. And that's all the movie is. It's basically a silent film. There's no talking. There's like maybe one scene with dialogue in it. And then after that, it's basically just fucking this dead body. And that's the rest of the movie. So. <laughs> so, what do you think of Rob Zombie's remake of Jason? You mean Michael Myers? Oh, Michael Myers, yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah, oh, Halloween was fucking dope. Man, I actually, I, I don't, dude, there's not really too many remakes that I didn't hate, dog. I know some people hate remakes. The one remake that I fucking hated and I'll never watch or even look at is the remake of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. That I was just whack. That. That was, it was uh, whack, yo. That was the stupidest shit I ever seen in fucking life. He looked horrible. It's not just yeah, that. It's just a he look. have the I mean, The way that they portrayed him is, is a pedophile. Like, yeah, Freddy yeah. was always a petty, but they didn't, they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't get that in depth with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was fucked, dog. Like, yeah, that shit was, eh, that was whack, bro. Um, the Jason remake, I love. I loved all the Texas uh, Chainsaw remakes. Well, the first Texas, yeah, both of them uh, from 03 and then the one that they just did. Uh, uh, really kind of, it's not really a remake, but the Texas Chainsaw 3D, um, I love that. So I actually scratch that. That's not really a remake, but fuck. Um, yeah. Uh, what about Evil Dead? Rob, Chucky. The new that version was, of Chucky. That's the best one. Uh, that was probably the best remake, hands down. Rob Zombie's Halloween, the first one. The second one it was weird. I liked it. I know a lot of people talk shit about it. And, and, and I will say, though, dog, Rob Zombie did fuck up in my eyes hard. In, in the in the fact that there's one rule with Michael Myers, at least in my eyes, and I'm sure a lot of people will back me up on this. Michael don't Myers talk. don't. Uh, he doesn't talk on me. Yeah, exactly. So that was a big that was a big no no. <laughs> don't know, Rob. No. And I don't know where the hell he was going with that white horse either. I don't fucking find out. Uh, yeah, I didn't get that shit either, man. Maybe at the time I was taking a lot of ass and go experimenting with some drugs, dude. Was writing some different shit, you know? I mean, <laughs> we all do it. <laughs> yeah. There's a new, there's a new Halloween movie being made. Um, a new remake. It's somebody totally different. Yeah, dog. Is that the thirty one? Yep. Um, yeah, dog, that was the, I haven't seen like a trailer for it, but like all the promos that I've seen for it, like the promo posters and pictures on the internet look dope. Um, I, I think that this was his way of saying Halloween 3, because if you remember Halloween 3 season of the witch was different from the Halloween series. And uh, I remember watching this documentary on Halloween where they were saying that, Honestly, Halloween was supposed to be a different story each movie, but Michael Myers just became so fucking popular that they just continued to use him. So that's why number three was number three. Like, after Halloween 2, that was supposed to be done. There wasn't supposed to be another Michael Myers. And then they were going on this old plan of, you know what I'm saying, just to the Halloween name and then do these different stories. But after Season of the Witch came out, motherfuckers was like, no, we want Michael Myers. Leprechaun in the hood. Leprechaun in the hood. Yep. Good shit. Dope. That was just that was just funny because he smoked the shamrock or smoked the poison. Yeah, I love it, dog. Leprechaun in the hood is awesome. We a friendly we is a friendly we. I agree. (laughs) What about the uh, Evil Dead remake? Yeah. Loved it. I, I loved it, man. I know there were some people that dissed it, but that fucking chainsaw scene when he shoves the chainsaw down girls' throat, oh my god. That's fucking orgasmic. Let me tell you another, another set of movies that I really dig that a lot of people bash is, I like all the wrong turns, man. Those are good movies. All five. Or six. <clears throat> all five of them, huh? Yeah, you know what's crazy, dog? And y'all are gonna probably be like, what the fuck? But I don't even think I've seen one, bro. Yeah. I've never checked out a wrong turn. And now that I said that, I'm here right now. I'm going to go watch them. Maybe not all five of them, but at least the first three. Here comes hey, the next bro. Damien song. Wait till you see I'm that. I'm telling you, dude. They're, they're, they're crazy as hell, man. Them backwards inbreds, motherfuckers, man. <laughs> but, uh... 
I also know another thing about Damien that me and Damien have in common that, that uh, I was I was hoping to discuss a little bit. We're both wrestling nerds. Oh boy. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. yes. And fuck you, Snickers, because he don't like wrestling. No, I'm sorry. Anything past 98, you might as well hang it up. And who quit wrestling <laughs> in 98? Think about it. 98. Fuck, oh, man, that's a long time ago, bro. They're my favorite band. <laughs> well, rap group. Oh, uh, ICP? Yep. Okay. And, uh, I'm in it for the long run, bro. I've been watching wrestling since I was, like, three years old. Man, um, yeah, dog, definitely. Wrestling is, uh, especially, um, being from Wisconsin, uh, especially being from the southeast of Wisconsin, um, you know, Kenosha, Racine, Milwaukee. Milwaukee loves wrestling, bro. Like, Milwaukee and wrestling go fucking hand in hand, dog. So, um, it's in our roots out here, dog. Professional wrestling is a thing. Like, for sure, dog. Oh, yeah. I can't believe it, man. Monday, Monday night, I was three different sorts of fucked up, man. Fucking Daniel Bryan, man. I was like, God damn it. Oh, yeah, that Daniel Bryan's retirement, dog. Yeah, that was pretty sad, bro. You know, I ain't cry. Oh, man, you know, I mean, you know, maybe. I don't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's crazy, man, because old dude was just now getting to where he needed to be. He was just now getting that recognition and... It's like it's, it's just like Edge though, man. Edge, that same shit happened to him. Yeah, man, that's that's just sad. But you know what? That's wrestling for you, man. And you know what's crazy is what Daniel Bryan was talking about though is he said his brain wasn't right, bro. So I mean, think about all that trauma on the brain all the time, dog. You know what I'm saying? Taking chair shots, all that shit, dog. I mean, that rattles some shit up there. That's supposed to be happening, you know? I don't see how like. Jeff Hardy, Matt Hardy, and the Dudleys and them motherfuckers are still going, bro, because after going through all them cables off 30-foot ladders and shit, man, god damn. People can say wrestling is fake as they want to, but jump off a fucking 30-foot ladder and go through a table and tell me it doesn't hurt. Yeah, no, nah, exactly, dog. Uh, I'm just saying, you know, and like, Okay, I get into professional wrestling, yes. Like, I get into, I've, I've started to get into WWE a little bit more um, in this past couple of years. And there was a point in time I wouldn't watch WWE for like, fuck, dude. I'd say like eight years, dog. I, did, I wouldn't even turn it on. But that opened my eyes to a lot of other shit, like Combat Zone Wrestling, IWA Mid-South, and, um, fuck, what else? I like a lot, dude. Uh, Chikara Pro Wrestling. Um, shit like that, but but more the deathmatch style for sure, uh, like the combat zones and the IWA, uh, mid south, deep south, like that's my shit, bro. You know, funk hacks, fucking light balls, all that shit. So what? That's really getting. When you talk about death matches, man, I gotta give a big shout out, man. Motherfucking Corporal Robinson, man, that dude goes. Bro, hell yeah, man, for sure. <laughs> Didn't he do a few shows out you guys for? Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? We used to fuck with Court back in the day before all that shit went down with uh, with Psychopathic. And then after that, we kind of went our separate ways. You know what I'm saying? We didn't really talk to him that much after that. But, uh, yeah, man, out here, uh, Ricky Wisconsin has a wrestling federation um, that was started by Mo Foley. Shout out to the homie Mo Foley and my homie Pitt Stain. Uh, the Foley's dog, they're, they're a big um, reason why Wicked Wisconsin is what it is and why Wicked Wisconsin grew throughout the years because uh, they had Foley's Irish Pub and Grill would let us do shows constantly and uh, they started the Wicked F and Wrestling. And uh, yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? Orb came and did some shit down here. Uh, Madman Pondo did some shit. Too Tough Tony. Um, the haters, I think, is yeah, has wrestled for us. Zach Gowan. Um, we could have a wrestling show, man. I want to bring it back. Full time. I wanted to get us in a venue. We always did it outside. I wanted to be indoor. 
do that. Hopefully that's a goal, bro. Hopefully we can do that. Yeah, that would definitely be a goal, man. Snickers. Man, I mean, it'd be different because uh, Dark Half used to do live commentary, and it kind of brought kind of uh, a strangle mania type effect. But, I mean, doing it our way. What I'm saying, I mean, Garrett was a fucking character, dog. <laughs> you summoned? Oh, man. You summoned me? Can I help you? What's up? Do you have any more questions? Do I? Yes. I want to know what he thinks. Just because I don't bring this up much anymore, what do you think of Slim Jesus? What do I think of Slim Jesus? Yeah. I think, it, I think it's funny. I think it's hilarious. Ugh, like, the cat's just so fucking upset about fuckers like bitches and Slim Jesus and, and, and they get like upset. And I'm like, dog, this is fucking hilarious. Are y'all listening to the same thing I'm listening to? This is fucking funny. I think it's, I think it's funny, for real, dog. Like, and I'm not trying to say like I think it's funny. Like, fuck them guys, man. It's funny. Like, no, I think it's hilarious. Like, comedy wise. And matter of fact, I'm, I'm kind of a fan of Stitches. Honestly, dog. Like, I, me and Gino went and seen Stitches in concert. <laughs> like, the, the, the Stitches uh, shut down a venue in Illinois. In Berwyn, Illinois, called, uh, uh, let me spit that out, Berwyn, Illinois, called Tiger O'Sally. And, uh, Stitches was doing cocaine on stage, and for some reason the cops heard of this, and they tried to get in the venue, but Stitches had security lock the door, and these motherfuckers were about to bring, like, a fucking battering ram and shit, and, like, go through the door and shit, dog, like, over awesome. real shit. It was crazy. So through all this commotion, you know, motherfuckers are running out of the venue, uh, and, and, you know, people are just screaming and shit. I'm standing there in the middle of the floor clapping full of, of um, powdered sugar and champagne or whatever he was throwing. So, yeah, that was, a, that was definitely a, a different, different time. <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, cool as hell, man. Yeah, man, that's all. It's a joke to me, bro. I can't take it seriously, dog. Like, it's funny. Like, I, I can't even diss them, kid. Whatever, you know? <laughs> I don't see shit about him anymore. I think he was just... I don't even know. <laughs> but I gotta pick up... Yeah, yeah dog, he is a five-by-night artist, bro. Already come and go, you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. it, it, that probably has a lot to do with the fact he was getting punked on stage a lot. You know, I mean, this kid's life was not really in danger, but I guess in a way, because what if any of these people really wanted to go on stage and just start putting hands on him? What is he going to do? I hope he's got a really good security guard. Yeah. One more question before, uh, I don't know if he's got a couple more. What do you think um, of the mainstream music scene right now? Oh, we can go all night, bro. I'm trying to uh, surpass Satanic's interview five and a half hours. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking. Uh, mainstream. Um, honestly, Doug, I, I like some of the music out right now, bro. Believe it or not, I know we're burying the mainstream right now, but uh, uh, I like I like Kendrick. I like Schoolboy Q. Um, I like J. Cole. Uh, <laughs> no clue who any of those guys are. Side of that. What's up? I have no idea who. I don't know who any of them guys. He's like, I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah, bro. Not a <laughs> but at least, at least you like them. That's cool, you know. No, uh, yeah, dog. I mean, really, besides them cats, I don't. There's not really too many out there right now that I'm really digging. I mean, uh, shit. Yeah, Schoolboy Q, Kendrick Lamar, uh, Big Cole, fuck. Um, mm. Uh, mainstream music, I mean, just out of rap, uh, you know, other shit, uh, Twisted, Monoxide, on his Periscope, so he's talked about a band called 21 Pilots, and, um, I've seen a video of them, uh, a video of one of their songs called Stressed Out on the Revolt Channel, and, uh, after seeing that, I was like, yo, this is different, those are kind of dope, so I checked out a couple of songs of his. Uh, yeah, I kind of like it. It's dope. I mean, there's two songs I really like. Of. They're good. Yeah, Stressed Out is really dope, and uh, I think one called Car Radio is the other one. I really like songs a lot. Uh, the other shit is, is, is different, you know what I'm saying? It's definitely a different taste, but those two songs speak to me, man. They speak to fucking soul.
<laughs> sure is he. Any more questions, what Coleman? What do you oh, got? Man, what, what, I can go on for nights, man. Well, come on. So, uh... I want to know what Damien Quinn thinks of that Easy 606 character's music. Oh, no. What do you think, bro? You know what I'm saying? I mean, shit. Uh, man, definitely want to fucking fuck with you more in the uh, future. We got to track, man. Have you heard it? Yeah, no, for sure. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, the first time I heard you, you did a track of Roger Kell. Keep you cautious, no. Good song, though. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's funny you said that because she just now sent me a new track tonight. So, <laughs> he was like, oh, hey, Roger Cow. Uh, like, what's going on? I first heard you with Roger Cow and uh, Bloody Ruckus. And I was like, yo, this is this is ill. For sure. So, I could see us definitely uh, fucking around and doing something in the future, man. For sure. Oh, hell yeah, hell yeah. Sure, yeah. sure, man. We definitely got to get something going because uh, I'm getting ready to drop a. Uh, like a little mixtape to hold people over for a little bit and then I'm gonna start working on my, my actual project. But I'm doing the same thing, dog. That's what's up with <laughs> in the same boat. Yeah, yeah. So when it when it comes time to do that that official project, I'm definitely need Damian Quinn on that bitch. Hard dog, that's dope, man. That's what's up. Yeah, like I said, man, hopefully we can get something laced up. I'm working on a mixtape right now called uh, Eyes Without a Face. And that should be out soon, man. That should be out by uh, April, May. And then this fall, I'll be dropping my first full-length solo LP, um, which I'm, I'm, there's a toss-up on the name right now. I'm not really sure. Um, I wanted to name it Free on a Meat Hook, the album. But I'm also thinking of calling it the Wisconsin Chainsaw Massacre. So, uh, oh, shit, that'd be dope. I asked fans online what they thought, and Wisconsin Chainsaw Massacre went over well, so that might be it. I'm not sure, man. That's pretty dope. Man, I like the shit. What we were talking about earlier with the Leatherface of Wisconsin and that game and all that shit, but my bad. It'd be definitely pretty dope, um... If you ended up out on the road with Scum again, man, because we were actually talking about that not too long ago. I told Scum I, that I wanted him on a project, and he said, as soon as they got a stop at somewhere in my area, we're going to try to lock it up, where, you know, he can just come to, come to the crib and knock it out, you know? Man, I hope I'm not talking too out of text here, you know what I'm saying? Oh, well, I ain't talking too much, but rumor has it I might be touring with Scum this fall, so. I don't know. Hey. Uh, I'm not sure. but I hope, the, I hope that's that. true, man, because anytime you all, anytime you all, see, I'm mad because I was supposed to come hang with y'all in two different places and ended up having to work both of them. Like, I'm about, an, I'm about two hours from Columbus, Ohio, and I'm about an hour from Louisville, Kentucky. Damn. Actually, yeah, I mean, you gotta fuck with us, bro. Let's make this happen, man. I mean, hey, if this tour happens this fall, if we definitely come out and fuck with us, bro. It's gonna be a good time, man. Yeah, I told Buckshot um, the night that y'all had that show in Louisville, I'm like, man, make sure you tell Scum and Damien, and I said, what's up? Buckshot, that's the homie, bro. I dig Buckshot, man. I mean, I haven't heard of him before the Underground Avengers, um, like probably a lot of people have. But, uh, man, from then on, dog, I was like, yo, this Buckshot character fucking kills it, dog. For that's sure. who I grew up on. Yeah, yeah, that's who I grew up on. That motherfucker's been doing music since I was a youngin', man. Yeah, that's crazy though, man. Yeah, he was popping off in the South, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, don't you have a track with, like, Corn or some shit like that? Yeah, uh, with one of the dudes from Corn. Yeah, from back in the day, that's dope, bro. You know what I'm saying? I didn't even know. Well, I mean, yeah, he was putting it down for the minute, and then, yeah, man, I mean, you know, I uh, popped off later, you know, years later in the underground, uh, with the underground Avengers and Boondocks, man. I mean, that, man, that album right there, the fucking hell. Class, Boondocks, you know, Buckshot, and, you know, obviously, big shout out to Class, that's how let's see families. Good shit. Oh, yeah. We had him on for uh interview last month, easy. Yeah, yeah. Class was definitely the homie, man. I just, I dropped a track with him, too, a couple, 
I think it's on its next project, actually. Uh, damn, look at Easy busy out here. I love it, bro. That's what's up, man. Yeah, class is dope, dog. We did that pain remix together. He let me, uh, I'm on pain the remix, and it, it was dope, man, for real. Um, and the oh, video, yeah, yeah. That video was dope. Original pain, man, that video was fresh, huh? Hell yeah, with that beat locker and shit. I have interviewed, I kid you not, at least over 3,000 underground artists over seven and a half years. Oh shit. I've been doing this a while. <laughs> Quite a while. Well, that's why this, he was gone so fucking well. Shit, dog. He's been doing this for a minute. Word, man. Uh. Hell yeah. I believe yeah. he can take most of the questions. I mean, it is his show. It is Wednesday. Bury the mainstream, so you know. Go ahead. So what's up? Let's bury him. Let's bury him and let's let's start with uh, uh fuck probably the Migos. Let's start with them. If you guys don't know who they are, just check them out. Probably listen to it for thirty seconds and you'll be done. You'll be like, all right, I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, Migos. Man, we can bury a couple motherfuckers right now. I would like to, man. I'm stealing, I'm stealing Lord Infamous in style, dog. That's a real thing, bro. Get your own. Get your own. That reminds me. Hey, have you seen Straight of that. Out of Content yet? Yeah. I think... Yep, Ice Cubes. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, you're talking about uh, Lord Infamous or something? No, Ice Cube son. Um, straight out of Compton. The movie he uh. Did oh, that. my bad, dog. I couldn't hear you. Easy, you son. Real easy. Yep. Good movie. Yeah, man. They nailed it. Yeah, well, straight out of Compton was fucking ill, dog. Um, I seen it in the theaters and shit. Uh, when it came out, and yeah, man, fucking dog. Yeah, that movie was definitely ill as fuck. The funny part hey, is, baby. I'm sitting here watching fucking South Park about an hour before your interview. They're playing Fuck the Cops by then in South Park. And I'm like, and the FBI is sitting here threatening to throw him in jail and shit, and now that's playing on a fucking cartoon years later. Ain't that crazy though? You said they were, they were kind of like reenacting it on South Park? Yeah. No, they were actually seeing it. And they were just, uh... They were... It was fucked up, man. I was like, no way. <laughs> crazy. Crazy story about, uh, you speaking about Lord Infamous, too, dude, he is, uh, man, about a month and a half before he died, we actually, uh, like, I got to hang out with old dude, man. I did a show with dude from my hometown. And, oh, uh, got to smoke with him. I got to smoke with him. Frazier Boy, Party, and yeah, miscellaneous. And I tell you what, Lord Infamous was a character. Oh I man, dog, I've heard. I've heard. I mean, I never got to meet him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's amazing to me, bro, because Lord Infamous is up there, dog, for sure. And uh, aim to be the king of horrorcore. I mean, I was uh, one at one point in time, Dark Half, he and Dark Half, uh, were hype men for King Gordy. We used to hype King Gordy from, shit, I want to say 2000 and... 2008 to 2011. So anybody else thinking of horrorcore, I was always like, no, dog, it's King Gordy. But when Infamous started, it was like, can we say anything? Come on, Infamous. <laughs> like, oh, definitely, man. Fuck, dog. Uh, shit. That's in peace, bro. Lord Infamous. I wish I could get a song with him or, or even just met him, dog. Like, to do a song with him, that would have been my dream, but just to meet him, bro, to smoke with him, or possibly do cocaine, or whatever he wanted to do, I would have did that with him. Mm -hmm. I don't uh, care. We had, we, we had to go pick up that day, like, we went and picked him, I went and got him, and then my dude went and got Part T and everybody, because they came in, because he had a show the night before, and Part T and them came straight from the airport. RT and Frazier Boy and Miscellaneous. So I went and got Lord Infamous and my dude went and got the other three. And all the way back, we was on our way to a Chinese buffet. And he, 
like he was like, hey man, where can I get some motherfucking pain pills at? I'm like, what do you want? He's like, everything you can get. <laughs> he's like, and I need, he's like, he's like, and I need some smoke too. I'm like, man, I got you on that all day. So like, we go to one of my homies is like a one stop shop, and. Man, this dude spends so much money on pills and shit, dude. Man, I ain't never seen that much. I ain't never seen one dude buy that much shit at one place in my life. Like, he, oh, he you know, I've heard story. I've heard of uh, mastermind of Nottis actually being able to party like that, like be off like five different drugs and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like when I party, bro, I try to party responsibly. And then some people are like, "Oh, you're not smart. You can't party responsibly." Yes, you can. Stick to one drug and don't do a lot of it. You know what I'm saying? But um, some people aren't like that. There's some people actually have a high tolerance, and mastermind apparently can take like five different drugs and just be cool. And I'm like, how, dog? <laughs> I'm not five different drugs. That's a roller coaster, bro. I don't want to feel I'm like not that. Going, I'm not going to put any artists down when I say this, but I've performed with one certain artist, <laughs> <we're> white, <clears throat> that. I was, prefer we were performing a song, and this fucker forgets his whole goddamn verse because he's so fucked up. Oh, shit. That's no good. <laughs> bro, I'm not sure That's why you have to be responsible, bro. There's a time and place to party. And that's not it. And I'm not this a little white punk. Actually, I'm a huge fan of Little White. Like, Down Me Now is probably one of my top favorite, like, hip-hop albums. You know, oh, yeah. it's definitely, like, in the category of a top 10, doubt me now is up there. But, there is a time and a place to party, bro. And fans come to see you, man. You know what I'm saying, Doug? Like, they come to see you perform, bro. Um, get them to the Greek, they said it the best in that movie. They were like, they want to see all this drink and party, but they don't want to see them too fucked up. And, and, and that always stuck with me. <laughs> that saying out of that movie. Cause it's like, yeah, do fans want to party with you? But you don't want to see you puking on yourself, stumbling, or being on stage forgetting your lyrics. That just, that's not a good look, man. That sucks. Pet the furry walls. Pet the furry walls. Pet the furry walls. Goddamn, ten to what call it. Damn. You know, I'm sitting here looking at the time. <laughs> Thinking about Sictanic's time, and it dawned on me, Sictanic told us his grandmother actually was buying his um, studio time and was up on stage pretty much with him, 93 years old, listening to Sictanic when he first started out. And I realized, we never asked, does your family support your music career? Um, at, at first, no. And, and that's crazy that I say that because my mom is an old school punk rock chick. And uh, she loves punk rock music and loves to party. And actually sometimes makes me look like a chump when it comes to partying and shit. I'm like, mom, it's time to turn down, okay? Like, mom, let's chill, you know? But, um... At first, they didn't get it. They didn't get the rapping, and um, they seen me put all my time and effort into this and didn't see a lot of results coming out of it. So they didn't really get it. The last about five years to three years of Dark Half and you know, Damian Quinn, um, my mom did start supporting it, and now she comes to the shows. So if you come to a show in Wicked, Wisconsin, you'll probably run into my mom because she'll be outside um, smoking marijuana with the fans and taking shots of alcohol. And, um... <laughs> why not? That's how it goes now, man, for sure. So, yeah, my mom definitely supports And my whole family kind of supports it now. They all don't come out to the shows and shit. Um, my mom and my little brother Dustin are really the only ones that come to my shows out of, you know, like my quote-unquote immediate family. But, um, yeah, they all, they all see that, you know, obviously I tour and I, you know, do live off this shit. So, I mean, can't really argue with that. They're like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever, dude. <laughs> He's made it clear, you know, so he's making money. Now now they support it. <laughs> I tell you, right. Also, not enough money, though, because they're like, fuck, dog, shouldn't you have, like, a car and a house and all this shit? And I'm like, hey, 
I'm doing dabs, okay? You probably don't understand what that is, Grandma. <laughs> but it's fucking dabs, okay? And I'm high. <laughs> See, I don't what y'all need to do that. right now, though, y'all need to go to gorehopshop.com or I don't know if it's dot com, but y'all need to go to Gorehop Shop and y'all need to check yeah, out that new Damien Quinn. Yeah, that new Damien Quinn gear, man, because it is fucking dope. And I'm getting a shirt as soon as they get my fat ass a size that fits. The <laughs> day they ran out of. They ran out of it. I got to cut over easy just just because I like to do that once in a while, just to test them. All right, go, finish up easy. So yeah, they ran out of the six X. So yeah, Scum has to order me some because I've already got on him. Well, I'm, I'm a lot of large character myself, man. So I cater to the um, overweight crowd. You know, they love me. I love them. We share burgers and deep fried foods and deliciousness. So. That's why the 6X shirts went fast, dog. My bad. Hey, it's, a, it's all good because I got one of them dark hat ones before they ran out, and I was happy as hell to get one. So, nice. uh, I'm definitely I'm definitely grabbing it. Me and Damien is going to be fighting over them now. So i got to give a <laughs> shout out. A lot, of my, a lot of my family's out of Wisconsin, so that should probably answer that question as well. You know what I'm saying? God damn it. <laughs> we got the uh, Zombie King tuning in. He's been listening pretty much from the beginning. I hey. want to give him a shout out. Colorado did you, did you say the zombie king like Blake said homie? Nope, nope. Different zombie king, different rapper. Oh, okay, good. All right. Yeah. So easy over there. You did not ask my favorite question. They're in the hot seat. So I'm going to bug you and you know what it is. We what technically didn't even finish the hot seat. We kind of got off topic. Well, no, we got off topic. So why don't you hit him, hit him with, like, you know, a couple of the good ones. Okay, okay. So, uh, Mr. Snickers is a big fan of the pudding, man. So I always ask people, man, what do you think about this whole Bill Cosby shit? Like, is this guy a really America's favorite dad? Or did he, did, was he straight up raping bitches? You know what, dog? <laughs> I think it's bullshit. And if he did rape them bitches, dog, why the fuck are they coming out now? Oh, that's that's what's bullshit to me. Y'all gonna sit there and fuck with this man thirty years later? Why ain't you do that shit when it happened? That's, that's shit, yo. I don't I don't know, dog. But I mean, I can't really. I'm not gonna defend anybody because I don't know. I don't care. But but you know, poor Bruce. Bruce seems like a nice guy. I mean, that's ghost dad, bro. <laughs> exactly. See? Oh, that really raping bitches? Oh, that's the question. The Bill Cosby that's show? Good. I don't know. <laughs> that's Heathcliff. That's Heathcliff Huxtable, man. <laughs> no. I mean, dog, you know, we all grew up on the Cosby show. I like Jello. I like pudding. Jello pudding, you know, with the, the, the vanilla center and the chocolate. Like layers, you know that shit. I like that shit. So it kind of sucks, man, that you can't look at Bill the same anymore. If Bill Cosby is raping these bitches, but like I said, dog, it's crazy though that thirty years later, twenty years later, whatever the fuck it is, y'all are coming out now and saying something. Nobody was breaking up say that shit back then. Why not? I don't get it. But I wonder if he was feeding the the, the roofies in their drinks, or if he was feeding the roofies in their pudding. Pudding. Who can eat this pudding? Eat some of my pudding, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. So, uh, another, another touchy little subject that we always like to ask. Caitlyn Jenner. Oh, here we go. How in the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How in the fuck did Caitlyn Jenner, aka Bruce Jenner, Win Woman of the Year. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop right there. What do you mean, a.k.a. Bruce Jenner? What do you mean, dog? So this way, that, that <laughs> Caitlyn I've been saying, wait, hold on. That Caitlyn chick that I've been saying is fine this whole time. What? Is a boo? What? What do you mean? <laughs> I hope you fuck with me. I know you fuck with me, bro. Because I've seen this, 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 this beautiful Caitlyn Jenner uh, lady, you know, and, and my eyes are, are you know, 
just just glued to her. So I mean, I what do you mean, Bruce? <laughs> yeah, right, dude. Whatever. <laughs> 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 No, I don't dog, no, nah, what I don't know about that shit. What about it? <laughs> like, I don't know. I know that uh, if that's the choice that he wanted to make, well good for him, I guess. Um he still has uh um I don't know, a couple of fine daughters that I think are about to be eighteen, right? So it's kinda weird that I said that, but whatever, okay, so <laughs> let me scratch that. But um okay. yeah, man, what the hell? I don't, I don't know, bro. <laughs> uh, that's kind of weird, I guess. If that, I mean, I guess in some eyes, and maybe it's I guess, you, some. I guess if you're um, so glued to Caitlin, I guess we can make something happen there. I mean, and is it, you know, is it weird that I, his daughters are fine? Because there's that one rapper dude. I think his name's Tyga. He's yeah. hitting it. That dude's like he's free or something. Like, bro, you. I think that's considered a pedophile. I don't know. Maybe he does. <laughs> that's kind of that's like super weird. But well, you know, uh, okay. I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, nobody damn, this bitch ain't even an thing here. That's what I'm saying. Like nobody's really like, like the media is just kind of like, oh, it's Tiger, and I don't remember what the other, what's her name, the other Kardashian uh, girl, the little, I don't fucking know, but like you watch her dinner. dinner. Now you know why oh, she's, she's a famous, Jenner, yeah. right? Kylie, Kylie Jenner. Easy. Kylie Jenner, yeah, okay, well, yeah, that's her. And this type of dude is like a rapper, he raps with Drake and, and all them. Um, yeah, he uh, apparently is doing something, and the media talks about it all the time, like, huh, Tiger and, and Kylie Jenner. It's like, what? Like, y'all just let that shit fly? Like, it's cool? Like, if my oh, little Tiger. daughter was a Tiger at 23, I'd be like, listen. You're not going out tonight, especially with that Tiger character, okay? No, you stay in the fucking house. That's for sure. Um, he's been into all kinds of people about that bitch, man. Like him and Bieber were into it, and him and another dude was into it because they all said they were fucking that, well, they were screwing that bitch. That's crazy, dog. Yeah, that's, and that's what I'm saying. And, and nobody's like questioning this dude or. He's not arrested, or the you know, like, it's just, it's, it's whatever, like, alright, well, it's whatever. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know, dog, that dude cut his nuts off, that's crazy, bro. Did he switch the phone to the doctors? <laughs> I think hey, uh, a right above it. Tommy Necro says, <laughs> sorry he can't call in, they're storyboarding for his new music video. But he says, tell Damien hi. Word, well, I'll be looking forward to that new music video and tell him I said hi. So, hi. 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 Just like that, okay, <laughs> hi. <laughs> As in he's high. It's gotta be, it, that was kind of, that was on the verge of being feminine, but it wasn't really, but it was kind of, so you gotta kind of be like, hi, like it's gotta be weird, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't think I know anybody that just says like anymore, they're just like, hi. Hi. I try to put on my professional big boy voice, you know? But it doesn't it sounds weird, that's what comes out. It's like hi. You should try to hear me like uh talk on like an answering machine when I have to leave a voice message, especially for something that's like important. I I sound like a kid trying to sound like an adult. It's fuck first. (laughs) Nobody takes me seriously, nobody. I still hate answering machines. I still hate answering now, machines, dog. I really don't even mess with now I just do my radio like, voice like, on like, the phone or something. Yeah. <laughs> Look, <laughs> Smith was just doing an interview one night and I got bored as fuck, right? <laughs> so, I started sitting in the background making fart noises through this guy's whole interview. He was boring. Hey? I, and you know you heard me, too, didn't you? I, mean, I heard you laugh at one point. I heard you laugh at one point. They didn't want to say nothing now. <laughs> I'm just sitting here wrong. You're in over there. Stopping <laughs> laughing gas. And Snyrax, bro. Dude, Snickers was like, uh, are, you, are you fucking with us again? <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, I see what's better. <laughs> we had one guy so born one night. Easy fucking falls asleep on the air and is snoring. <laughs> and I don't disconnect him. I let him. I mean, he was going at it too over there. He sounded like a fucking chainsaw. Hey, 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 I was I was getting my leather face of Wisconsin on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was ripping that shit up. Yeah, man. Face on, huh? <laughs> nah, man, like they, I don't know who the fuck they were interviewing, but I like straight passed out. And like the next day, they're sitting there playing clips, so like, you could hear me in the background. <laughs> <laughs> When you're home, that's funny home. though. He's yelling to you, world, <laughs> diabolic saw, or not diabolic. Now I'm thinking of diabolic. I'm looking at his post. Dilemma's manager, world, come in was yelling to you and shit. You're just snoring. <laughs> <laughs> He's over there like, tell uh, Easy not to be the misfit, even though he calls himself the voice of the misfits. Yeah. Um, I always thought that was crazy too. Like I'm the voice of the Misfits, and then they got the Misfits of Hip Hop over there. Hey, we're the Misfits of Hip Hop, man. Well, that's, that was that's, obvious, that's actually because we're um, big Misfits fans, bro. Like, uh, like actual, uh, like fucking uh, Walk Among Us is fucking one of my top favorite albums, bro. Like Misfits is the shit, and, and not like Misfits is one of my favorite, not just punk rock bands, but like rock bands of all times, man, and. Uh, Danzig's lyrics, like the shit that he wrote for the Misfits, like, man, definitely. Some hardcore shit, dog, you know what I'm saying? For sure. Go back and read some of them lyrics and be like, what the fuck are these dudes? Fuck it. Sorry about that. Oh, there he is. What the fuck? <laughs> He's like, sorry about that. How's it going, homie? Who we got on the line? Trying to get the last 10 fucking minutes. <laughs> Dingleberry Jam. <laughs> Welcome. Oh fuck! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> we got Lee Atkins cult shit in the building. Yes, we do. Well, it's called shit. He runs a cult shit go. page. Actually, oh. it's got quite a few views. But well, can I say something real quick? No, go for it. Oh. Yeah. No, I just wanted to go ahead and tell D. First of all, I'm a big ass fucking fan, man. I love you, man. Man, word, man. Much mm -hmm. love. Thank you, bro, bro. For sure, man. Hell yeah. Call shit for life, dog. <laughs> and hopefully for the... Several different names. I've been known as Twisted Maga. I've been known as Rare. I've been known as Dickhead and Jack. Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> man. Hey, shut the fuck up. <laughs> what, what is going on? I guess I'm a damn too. He's trying to talk. Your phone's cutting in now on you, homie. My bad, my bad. It's probably because I'm yelling. Everybody gets excited, dog. I'm excited. You're damn right I'm gonna get excited, man. You got D on the line. Right? <laughs> Cold shit, bitch. Oh, shit. Hell so, yeah. So, we got to be asking to be. It's definitely an honor to even speak to you, brother. Hey man, no, it's all good, bro. It's all good. I'm gonna take your dad, man. So that's <laughs> I had to, I, I, I never text me. God oh, damn it, but I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. I'm drinking. I don't do dabs, but uh, I'm, I'm having me a few drinks. That's dope, word. Yo, make that dab for Tommy. He said to dab one for him. All right, dime man. Dab to Tommy. That's dope. Cool. Um, I did whatever that. First came out and about knocked me on my ass. <laughs> I ain't much of a smoking guy. The shit never really did nothing. And I learned it from King Gordy. King Gordy, that motherfucker. It, it, you know, for being King Gordy's hype man, like I said uh, a while back ago, man, from 2008 to 2011. You definitely, uh, you definitely learn about weed, for sure, that's the thing. Uh, quality, <laughs> quantity, yeah. Yeah. fuck yeah. I just that's never about. was much of a weed smoke. All it did was make me hungry. Awesome, that's dope, that's what it's about, dog. Like, yeah, well, it's, it's dope until you get 400 fucking pounds. Hero. 
sounds good. It was all right, dude. Got over 400 pounds, and that shit won't ride, you know? Yeah, no, nah, for sure, dog. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm a rather larger man myself. You know, it probably has a lot to do with uh, cheese curds. I think it was got fried cheese here, so that's weird, but it's awesome. Like I, think. I was a bigger fella one. I got to admit, I've, I've killed that shit in the yeah, your phone's cutting in now pretty bad on you, homie. Are you on speakerphone? Yeah, I gotta keep the speaker right now. Trying to do a bunch of other things, homie. Volume down yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's why. Head. But, um, easy. I don't know how long he wants to stay on for, but definitely want to get the, um, a couple drops, or a drop for you. To bury okay. the mainstream. Okay. okay. Um... Sure. What's your time looking like, dude? Ah, uh, shit, dog. It's midnight over here, bro. Well, man, 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 <laughs> Dude, he said, fuck you, I don't like it, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that's right, hang up right now. Alright, see you guys later, Click. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, I'll send you the link to the uh, Sictanic interview. Get that over to him if you can. Oh, okay. Let me go. I'd love to hear what Six said, man, for sure. Oh, I learned a lot oh, that man. night. That's for sure. Alright, um. <laughs> Oh, never mind. I, I, I was about to interrupt you there. Easy, sorry about that. No, what do you what do you want to say? Oh, I just had a quick question while we had D up here. Um, I've noticed a lot of shit. He's you know, speaking about sick tannic and everything. Why the hell is everybody so friggin' hard on him, man? He's a shit. He is, dude. Um, I think because when people are generally when people are genuinely afraid of. And um, that's how they that's how they react. That's how they lash out. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Titanic and he scares me. That's just bottom line. Like, you know what I'm saying? And uh, some people can handle that, and some can't. You know, that's that's the beauty of this genre, bro. It's not for everybody. You know, yeah. what's crazy is, is, is even in this genre, how he can scare people that listen to horrorcore music or make horrorcore music, even at that sense so I mean yeah it's fucking I don't know man I mean um and also when somebody is successful uh jealousy just fucking it flows like the Niagara to the real thing and as far as a successful um underground fucking label dog they really are man I mean looking at, at Ground or even the hardcore scene as a whole, uh, you know, besides LSP and SKR, I mean, there's not really um, too many other labels that are really out there like that. So, I mean, yeah, man, that kind of really pushes people off and they hate. Haters are hating stuff. Haters gonna hate. Haters ain't us. He told me the main <laughs> reason they hate is because of his religion. You know what? It's nobody's business. Religion don't oh, make. <laughs> you who you are right and that's what what? I was trying to say about how he genuinely scares people and that's well, what they you know I've please with him on Twitter and stuff he is not as you know everybody claims he's those he's satanic no he's not uh, he is admitted yes, I'm, I'm sorry my bad <laughs> Oh, I was going to say, you know, I really don't know the answer to that, dog, because honestly, when Dark Half and Satanic and Roger Kell hung, like, hung out, dog, we just hung out as homies, but we never talked about fucking religion or anything like that. Like, it would come up maybe slightly, slightly, but nothing like that, dog, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we would just fucking chill, play video games, smoke, watch music videos, crack jokes, fuck Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, just what homies would do, dog. Like, so I really wouldn't know if he was really sick. Like, so I know he's really satanic. But I don't know if he's really satanic. <laughs> like, I couldn't tell you that. You know what I'm saying? Because, well, no, for one, he told me himself. You know, it, 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 the, what it 
it the way he is. You know, he just, he says what's on his mind. You know, the way the world is, you got to admit this world is kind of fucked. Oh no, he you does, and he does that, worship that, Satan. That I should have said that too. Yeah. When people speak their minds and they're real, um, the truth hurts, dog, and people don't like to hear the truth. And yeah. that's just bottom line. So when sick is out there speaking the truth, you know, half of the time, too, 95% of the time, a uh, motherfucker is going to hate. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to face it. I mean, that's why I've never had a problem with the dude, man. Because I can be real, I know what I'm saying, and, and uh, I, I can take, and I can take, you know what I'm saying, I can have a real conversation, so, so. Yeah, yeah. okay. I know somebody's trying to rub the hell out of the rub one off of them. <laughs> you see, trying to rub one off, but I hear you, right? I don't know what yeah. That's Bubba no, getting too excited again. Yeah, that is not me. <laughs> I can't help you. You're trying to rub it off the satanic one. <laughs> yeah, that coach. <laughs> oh, come on. I, I'm, we're not going to go into that subject. <laughs> we, we know you're well, excited. Do you, like, you, do, you do you like satanic with hair? Do I sound any better now? Now, hold up, Bubbles. Were you telling me you want to know about, first off, you want to know about the, uh, the cold shit movement, and then you wanted him to know mm -hmm. that you have his poster right over your wall on your bed, by your bed. Oh. Uh, yeah, I have. I have I think she's rubbing one off for of this. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> B, you, you got them all going, man. What the hell? <laughs> Come on now. This is one of our main promoters, so we've known it for a while. <laughs> Damn, I love the cold shit, but I don't know if I'd rub one off to it. Now, come on. I'm a freak. I'm a freak, okay? Get over it. Oh, so she's admitting it. <laughs> I do not know I'm not. <laughs> Damien's over there just shaking. She doesn't answer my question, though. Do you like the bald satanic or satanic with hair? <laughs> She just wants him to teach her how to Satan. You are, she's the in the old, she's in the old satanic. You said the bald, right? She's like, I'm not here. Is she satanic? Now, you talking about the bald balls or the bald heads? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, exactly. There you go. There he is. The bald head. <laughs> on his head, definitely with his eyes and his nose attached to it. Speaking well, of happy late birthday to Satanic. Okay. <laughs> okay, I better shut up. <laughs> hey, that's I'm easy. Any better now? Am I echoing like a motherfucker? No, you're better now. You got yeah. off uh, speakerphone. So easy. Yeah, well, suck my ear yeah. balls. You, you got a couple more of the yeah. posse questions I've been waiting for. Like, um, the rape, the Mary, the uh, okay. the five, okay. the five yeah, yeah. CDs. Okay. Well, close to it. Okay, I got you. All right, D. We're going to play a game. We're going to play a game. It's called Rape One, Kill One, and Marry One. Okay, good. All right. So, you got a choice between... Caitlyn Jenner. You got a choice of... Honey, oh, boo, honey Boo Boo, Honey Boo Boo's Mama. Fuck what? You got a Let's see, Honey Boo Boo's Mama, Caitlyn Jenner, and the 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 the, the, the Sarah Palin. All right, and then what is it? It's kill, rape, and what? Kill one, rape one, marry one. All right, well, Caitlyn, I'm just gonna have to kill. That's just, that's just, it's over. It's, it's over. You know, that's just useless to me. So, Caitlyn, you're done. Uh, you, that's all. Yeah. Um, so, Caitlyn, I'm gonna have to kill. All right, we're not raping or marrying that. All right, we just don't have the time for that. That's over. Uh, what is next here? Let's see. Uh, fuck, dude.
<laughs> He's thinking, shit. <laughs> He's like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, look, here's, here's how it's going down. Um, Sarah Palin, I mean, I guess, I mean, out of the three of them, she'd be the hottest, right? Sarah Palin's hot, right? Until she fucking speaks, and then it's over. And then it's like, ugh. So, I mean, I guess I'd have to rape her. And then, I don't necessarily want to fuck Honey Boo Boo's mom, but I would marry her because, obviously, she looks like she can cook. I mean, look at her talk. You know what I'm saying? What you cooking? Cooking something. Cooking something. Cook something. Cook, you know what I'm saying? So... That's, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's that uh, Southern cooking. Right, you know what I'm saying? But Sarah Palin, though, yeah, definitely rape her. And the mother not an advocate for rape, but maybe when it's Sarah Palin, uh, it gets a little different, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, fuck yeah. Anyway, let's see. What was that one? What was that one you said? Did you want to ask? CDs. Oh, great. Yep. CDs. Mm -hmm. CDs. Iowan. Oh, he already did that. Oh, well, you suck. I missed it. <laughs> no, he did that. It wasn't Bob. It was well, that's crazy. Crazy. He's on the pumpkin. He's on Close Cask. Yeah, that's right. I remember now, yeah. Who have you missed earlier? <laughs> I was probably grabbing coffee. Bobby, you said you had something to go. Okay, um... D. Of Damien Quinn. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm used to D. But anyways, okay. Damien Quinn. She's used to the D. I know you posted it on Facebook. Oh my god. <laughs> um, I know you posted it on Facebook, but what is actually going on with the cult shit movement? What is your um, plan? I, uh, um, the plans for the cult shit movement, um, for cult shit in general, is... As soon as possible, actually, I'm I'm, in, I'm talking with the Godfather Scum um, as of right now uh, to get all the legal shit situated because you know there's all that bullshit, you know, copyrights and this and that and all the fucking legal bullshit. But we're getting all that taken care of right now. Once that's a hundred percent, we can officially launch the new website that we've been talking about for years, and we're gonna finally make it happen. And that's gonna be. Um, the cult gear website so uh that'll be up and that will feature um cult masks um cult shit charms cult shit uh shirts hats all that good shit um but it's gonna be specifically for the cult shit you know what i'm saying so uh that's we got that coming up and then um i'm gonna be releasing a single here soon from dark half um, entitled Cult Shit, and it's actually a song that fuck should have been released a long time ago, but that's how we roll. <laughs> so, we're gonna finally get it out. And, um, that's dope too, because we're fine. We're kind of putting a stamp on what my brother created, and that's what it's about. And that's why we're gonna put this single out and get this cult gear up and running. And that all is gonna coincide with a group that I'm starting next year that I can't really talk about. Now, well, that's fine. Uh, I just wanted to ask gonna about be, that. Uh, I just wanted to ask about it because I know you posted on Facebook, and you know how it is with you know posting something on Facebook and saying something on per person. You know, it's two different things. Oh no, it's real. Yeah, that that post was legit for sure. We're gonna get cold gear. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be .net or .com, I don't know, whatever the domain would be, we're going to get that up and running, and then, um, yeah, fucking release that Dark Half Cold Shit single, and then there's going to be a group that's going to be surrounded by nothing but the Cold Shit movement, but like I said, I can't really talk about that. All I can say about that group, though, is it's going to be a super group, um, basically comprised of the best talent out of the underground of Wisconsin. That's all I can say about it, but... And I can also say that there will be approximately five to six members. But that's it. After that, we're going to have to see what it's going to be. But it's going to be based around the cult shit movement and, you know, talking about basically nothing but that. So, I mean, that won't be the only subject, obviously. But you know what I'm saying? That's going to be what they're about, so... Now, Danny, so didn't say that? that too easy? Can I chime in on that? Can I chime in on that one real quick? Go for it. Yes, sir. 
it's actually a quick question for D there. Um, I, I saw your post, and I commented on there. I don't know if you know it. I'm the one that runs the uh, Facebook page, Cold Shit. You know, I, I told you up there that, you know, it's it's nothing, you know, just trying to, to drag on Gino's balls, you know, rest in peace. But that, that that's that's all I wanted to do was show my love for the cult shit. And, you know, you know there's a lot of people out there that are um, trying to gain success off of um, my brother's death. And that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Important. That's real. Well, I definitely ain't trying well, to gain no success. That was, I mean, dog, uh, uh, a Facebook page dedicated to the movement, dog. That's not, that's not hate, bro. That's actually yeah, yeah, yeah. the dopest thing you could have done, man. We all need help, dog. I mean, this is horrorcore, bro. We we need help with promotion. Promoting is is definitely something that this whole fucking scene lacks. So, I mean, any type of help in that department is, dog. That's way appreciated. So, thank you for sure. Well, you're going to get it from me, definitely. And, well, but you probably heard uh, Easy talking about it. My name's Lee, but, you know, I'm also Dingleberry and several other ones. <laughs> well, not Dingleberry, <laughs> Dingle, Dingleberry Jam or some shit like that. But, hey, oh, Dingleberry Jam, right. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, I'm, I have my specialty down here in the South. You know, we make jams with Dingleberries. You know, but That's the only fits with the peanut butter. Get it right. He's got his own yeah, yeah, on yeah, that yeah. radio. Damn, down south. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of them southern boys. I'm actually talking to one of the guys on LSP South right now and about getting in for the promotion. And we're going to get the shit down here. Oh. Oh. Hey, I'm oh. more south than you are. No, well, you're so damn south, you don't count, but still. <laughs> that, was partially, that was partially a large part of my idea. Thank you very much. Well, I don't even know who I'm talking to on this. To be honest, I don't even know who I'm talking to on this. Yeah, you always remember my Dingleberry Jam. Yeah, you always remember my Dingleberry Jam. I went to uh, I went to Scum about six or seven months ago. And was like, look, you know, what I mean, I'm trying to fuck. I've been fucking with the jaw for a while. I'm trying to make it official. I want I want me and class. To, to try to do something with LSP South and that's when he actually yeah, yeah. started checking me out and uh, I mean I'm, I'm not going to say anything else than that but one day man that LSP South might come alive you know, it's coming coming alive. you guys are talking to Scum because Scum won't even talk to me he doesn't even like me I've been trying to get a job at the Roxy for the last three years dog. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually in the process right now. I don't know if y'all ever heard of, well, Easy, I know you do, because I'm talking to them about you as well. The Ground Zero here in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Oh. Uh, about getting them. And it, it's still a work in progress, you know. There's no promise I can make, but I'm trying my damnedest to get it. Mm -hmm. You know, I talked to you about it the other day, Easy. And they, they, the way they spoke, they are definitely interested. Because, I mean, I don't know if, if, if anyone has ever heard much about Ground Zero, but they've, man, they've hosted so many different people which, from, you know, from the ICP, Twisted, met, you know, all kinds of metal bands. It's, it's just one of those things. And I'm trying my damnedest. <laughs> it's the best way to say it. Dope. So easy. 606. Why don't you do that drop just in case he has to get going here in a little while? Oh, okay. Um, do you mind uh, doing like two quick drops for us? You can do them back to back if you want to. Yeah, um, I do mind. Fucking mind, alright? And let me tell you why. I haven't dabbed yet, bro. I'm sorry. Let me take this dab in his arm, bro. I'm probably trying. Why is that? It's like Snickers, dog. It's like Betty White without the Snickers or something until I eat the Snickers and then I'm Here we go, it. here we go. Man, you and Shaggy both. The first word out of Shaggy's mouth. Does that mean you're sweet as fuck? Or what the hell? He said something else after I bought, man. First word out of his mouth when I told him my name. <laughs> I think he's sweet as fuck, but still. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, when he gets done dabbing, y'all, like, basically get real super quiet so we can, so there's no, uh, no background noises. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And basically, basically the first one, Damien, you're just going to want to say, uh, you know, you're tuned in to 606 Bay, the mainstream, and whatever else you want to say. And then the second one, uh, do an underground wicked radio with DJ Snickers. All right, word. And then have him drop links just one time, and I'll cut it into both drops for you easy. That way people can go and uh, find his music and all that stuff. Cool, cool. That's what's up. Just whenever you're ready, Damon, let me know, and we'll get it all quiet for you. All right, man, for sure. <coughs> Y'all ready? Yeah, uh, first. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you want me to go? Yeah, go ahead. Yo, this is the leather face of Wisconsin, Damian Quinn, and you're listening to Easy 606's Bury the Mainstream. Come down with me. Okay, um, so, okay, and then the second one, I'm just shouting out DJ Snicker, like, what do you want me to say before I say DJ Snickers, though? Uh, underground, just, we radio. Oh, it's underground radio. Okay, see, that's the result of dabs, bro. My bad, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, y'all <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want me to do it? Go for it. Yeah. yeah. Yo, this is the Awkward MC, Damian Quinn, and you're listening to Wicked Underground Radio. Shout out to my man, DJ Snickers. I'll cut it later. You in Dilemma, man. It's always Wicked <laughs> Underground Radio. I think that's funny. <laughs> but he's, there's like four people that's done it. Yeah, maybe I'm going to change my radio just just for the artist. <laughs> All the group. Ain't that what the flyer says? I fucked that up. It's, it's underground wicked radio. <laughs> it's easy to fix. I just think it's that's pretty funny. <laughs> you want me to do it again? Underground wicked radio? Oh no, I got it. You're good, homie. <laughs> okay, well, man, my bad. No, I, I gotta go back and fucking probably should change it, bro. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No. <laughs> you tell these artists to get on their fucking game. They're like, listen here. It's not Wicked Underground Radio, motherfucker. Okay? It's Underground Wicked. All right? Oh, oh. Get it right. <laughs> you have to use that one. So, uh, Lee, <laughs> seeing how you're a big yeah, yeah, yeah. fan, and I get to take the question a lot, why don't you take a red question? Why don't you be the one to ask him that tonight? What do you think? Go for uh, the red question. Oh, come on now. Sure. Oh, oh I did it. No. <laughs> oh, I thought he didn't know what it no, was. You, oh, well, you, so you already are in the red question? Yeah, ask him the red question. Go for it. Sure. All right, D. We got a question. Have you or have you not ever earned your red wings? You know what, I don't, I don't think so, dog. Honestly, bro, I'm not just trying to say that. Because, like, you know, I'm like, oh, no, fuck no, dude. Because, like, let's be real, bro. I've, I think I've been pretty real this whole interview. Right? I've, I've let it, you know what I'm saying? I haven't even held back. I've just let it out. So, let's be real, uh, so, if I knew that I fucking ate, you know, I'd be like, fuck yeah, bro. But I don't, I don't think I've ever been down that road, dog. And now, maybe I feel like less of a man, dude. <laughs> So that's I'm mostly less of a man. I've done it once myself, and I don't plan on doing it again. Okay, so maybe it's better that I haven't done that, or should I? Uh, now you're like, you're There's two sets. Really? Yes. Yes. The red There's two sets. Yeah, you got two sets. Like right now, dog. I don't feel. I don't. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't step up to the plate and be like, "Yeah, dude, come on." I get. I busted. I busted out of my drawer and shit. Like, yeah, oh. Red rings right here. You don't say so. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> uh, no, but I don't, I don't think I, I don't think I have. But maybe it's a gold now. Maybe I don't know. There's your hand. <laughs> <laughs> 
if you want my advice, I'm coming, so. um, Underground Wicked Radio. Yeah. Uh, maybe hopefully by the next time I come on, y'all, I can be like, hey, I just want to start off the interview by saying I have earned my red wing. Oh, maybe, hopefully we can do that. That's the goal. Was it, there you go. was it Project Born? Which one? Was it Chris Polk? That was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> Yeah, uh, he ain't never that, yeah. Done that? No, he hasn't. No, the limo was the best, though, D. Hey, you know what? hey, come on, Pope. You, you, you just trying to be cool on the radio, dog. Let's be real. You know what I'm saying? Every come on, bro, bro. You telling me you haven't been down the uh, the river while it's flowing? No. Uh, hey, D. The best, the best answer though was dilemma. Dilemma. Okay, we asked him, right? And he just got really fucking quiet. And then his his manager hit up Snickers like, dog, you gotta cut that out. You can't ask the limo no game questions. <laughs> oh, no game questions? <laughs> he had no idea what it was. In fact, yeah, no, Dilemma's manager had no clue what it was either. I'm like, homie, do me a favor. Oh, no, y'all talking about Dilemma. Are we talking about, like, fast Brother Lynch Holmes, manager, or, um, new artist. Dilemma as yeah. a Tech 9 Dilemma on, um, My World. Well, watch out. Yeah, yeah, yeah that Dilemma. Right, yeah. <laughs> no shit, dog, for real. <laughs> it was freaking great. <laughs> But, um, his manager had no idea what it was either. I'm like, dude, is your old lady right there? He's like, yeah, why? I'm like, go ask your old lady what uh, her owning your Red Wings are. Man, he comes back fucking laughing. <laughs> yeah, dog. That's, yeah, man, that's a goal for 2017. I don't think I have, bro. And now I'm like, damn, dog. I can't even, I can't even stun, bro. I can't even sit here and stun and be like, I'm that. So the oh. third time I had Dilemma on for his third interview, I, I got to mess with him. Yeah. Man, you know what, hey, I'll rewind right quick. Uh, you brought a Project Born. A little funny story about Project Born, man. Uh, I, I got to give a big shout out to them dudes, man. Uh, especially Chris Pope. Oh, Dilly. Um, those dudes, man, were the first bigger, like, you know, bigger name in the underground scene to actually fuck with me. So, like, uh, they were, like, the first, dog, uh, you know what I'm saying? And when I first started talking to them, I'm like, oh, my God, it's fucking Project Born, dude. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the guys who were the first artist to ever get signed to Psychopathic Records, you know, Graveyard. And, yeah, man, it was a trip. And I, we worked with them dudes for years, from at least, like, 2006 to about 2008, 2009, uh, collabs and shows and... Um, they would let me come on stage when they were doing, you know, uh, uh, Twisted Toxic tour they did and some other bigger shows. And yeah, man, it was, man, we're always really cool, dog, for sure. So, shout out to Project Born. I just had to get that out real quick. My bad. No, you're good on me. Chris uh, just sent me a shirt in the mail. Um, one signed and one to wear. Dude, dope, yeah, Project Born, man, them, them dudes, man, for sure. And I hope they're all right right now, man, with everything that's going on in Flint, dog. That's fucked up, so. With um, the water crisis? You know. We just had him back on for my third interview with them. What was it, two weeks ago, Easy? And we brought that up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah man, I mean, how are they doing, about. dog? What are they doing for the water and shit? Like, are they, are they getting, I mean, I'm sure they got to, you know, drink cases and shit. I mean, uh, do they that's still true. live in Flint, or? Yes, they do. Okay. Damn, that's fucked. That's fucked, bro. Hopefully, man, we should start something. We should get something together, get some money donated to to, to Flint, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and to Project Born and their families, man. We should try to do something like that. You know, for sure, man. I mean, I'm sure that, you know, Project Born's taking care of. Those guys are hustlers. They know what's good, you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, hey, anything helps, though. You know what I'm that saying? For sure, dog. So. Damn. What is it? Hell yeah. Oh, I was just actually, I was trying to do something on the low low, but I'm waiting on a response. <laughs> oh, I got you. Uh oh. It's getting crazy up in here. With, <laughs> I'm trying to get a couple people on tonight, but everybody's busy. 
Oh, yeah, I'm scared. That's where it always goes, dog. When I, on Insight for the Insane, when I try to, like, randomly call an artist, they never answer, dog. It's probably because they know what's going on. <laughs> well, I tried to, I tried to do that to you one night. One night we had, uh, we had Prozac on, we Don't had DJ me. Clay on. Yeah, the hush about yeah, the Prozac. To- yeah, then right after, right after I talked to DJ Clay, I was like, I'm going to call Damien. <laughs> I tried to call you, you did it. <laughs> Bubbles. Yeah, my bad dog. He's probably in the studio, man. Been working on this mixtape like a motherfucker, man. Definitely want to try to get it out soon, so. We I'll have to do that on our line. The tape. There's not much going on. And <laughs> they asked him to do a fucking radio drop, and don't I forget to hit record. So, yeah. Oh, geez. I'll never live that down. Hey, I got the DJ Clay drop. But Prozac, I'd never heard it before. Yeah, you suck. Back to the show. <laughs> we'll get him back on. He's talking about the middle of next month, hopping on. Oh, you know, actually, yeah. I'm doing a show with Prozac this Friday in Appleton, Wisconsin. Oh, shit. Yeah, it sucks, man. Yeah, man, so I'm actually looking forward to that, man. Uh, um, I had the, the pleasure of with him on Twisted's Welcome to the Underground Tour. Um, I got to go as uh, Scum's Hype Man, and uh, I performed Are You Ready on the tour, and we also de- uh, debuted Lobotomy, which is me and Scum's side project, uh, the first track to a throat, which is going to be an iTunes single soon. And definitely quote Which I love. I love. I love it. Thank you. I got a time in. I got a time in. I'm sorry. I got a time in on that one. That, that all you ready, man? That song is the shit, bro. Thank you, man. It was it was fucking a, a, a pleasure and a privilege to and just I uh, do such. Uh, I was so humble, bro. It's such a fucking honor to uh, be able to perform, you know, that song and perform with the Belmont. This is welcome to the underground too, man. It's fucking insane. Hell yeah, man. Scum's a shit. Act on it, dog. It's like, wow, you know. It's Go so ahead, call it on the line. It was an honor to meet both of you. Yeah, it's cool. What's up? I got so much respect for them, Scum, and, and you guys with the cold crew, man. It's fuck. It's a shit, man. Thank you, man. Fuck yeah, dog. I mean, this shit, this shit is a... Uh, it's a cult, bro. And that's for sure, dog. But, but with cult, no, man, it's culture and it's family. And that's what it is, dog. Uh, 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 brainwashing our fans into thinking for themselves, bro. That's just bottom line, dog, and that's a real statement. You know what I'm saying? I mean, be you. If you want to listen to fucking Duran Duran and wear your mother's dress, well, you go and you do that. You can stop. I did that back in the 80s, so. There you go, bro, and you know what? You're still fucking called crew to me, goddammit, so. <laughs> hey. Uh, uh, hey, uh, I did that. <laughs> Drink the motherfucking Kool-Aid. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, I don't drink it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's it will. But that'll come when, when that group that I was talking about comes. Eventually, that's gonna be a big thing about drinking the Man, I can't wait for this shit. And eventually, us uh, committing suicide on stage, Doug, because it's gonna happen. So, we all will drink the Kool-Aid right in front of you. But when is it gonna happen? You don't know. It could well, be you not. tell me what happened so I can be there to contribute. <laughs> It could be 30 years from now, we'll drop our last album and drink the Kool-Aid on stage. You gotta make oh, it to the sound, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, wanna know, I wanna know if that super group can go outside of Wisconsin, goddammit. I got my I got my ideas of who it is, but I mean, uh, you know, D ain't gonna tell me, but still, I got my ideas. It would. And, uh, and unfortunately, I wish it could, but... uh. Uh, with, with what we're trying to do with it, man, I mean, it's it's better to have everything in the house. You know what I'm saying? Oh, hell yeah, man. Years, yeah. Dog, we did everything through the internet. We did everything through the internet. And, and I'm telling you, we learned that doing everything through the internet definitely kind of slowed down our career. Um, definitely, I'd say probably a year, bro. <laughs> I'm not lying. Like, throughout all the years of Dark App, we did a lot more in house. I think the fans would have got a lot more from us. But we had to send everything out and crap time and video to whatever I'm you know, trying to eat like we never in house. So. And, and unfortunately when you send stuff off, um, unless you really know the person like Satanic and uh, my homie Sinister who did Graveyard Blues, uh, oh, yeah. they, they actually shared a project. 
they cared about the project. You know, those were good dudes, and they, they took their time, and, and I got good, you know, products from them. Um, but some people, dog, you can send their shit out to them, and they don't. They sit on it all the time, whatever, and they... Let me turn their volume down. My bad, oh, my bad. And and they they don't don't volume, You know what I'm saying? Because it's not their project. They don't give a fuck. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Uh, and like I said, fortunately, I was blessed enough to be people like Sinister and Satanic who would take our music and care about it and give us good product back. But, you know, uh, even even for other shit, though, it just, dude, graphic design, like I said, uh, videos, Doug. There was a point in time where we had a problem with getting videos done. The level was shot in 2012, and we didn't even get that motherfucker out until 2015. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shit, though. And it's all because of editing and, and people just not good for it. You know, so if we would have did that in-house and had knowledge to do that, it would have came out a lot sooner. Oh, yeah, definitely. Sounds like, uh, I'm gonna have to fuck to. Sounds like I gotta pack my bags and move to Kenosha. Huh? That's what I'm That's thinking. Right, about. I wanted to go there just to promote. Move to Kenosha, bro. I'll show you guys the fucking. I'll show you guys where the best cheese curds are. That's what I've been here. I've been in there like that grilled cheese sandwich you posted a couple weeks ago. Hey, dog. Man. <laughs> that shit made me sick, bro. What was it, bro? Oh, the grilled cheese sandwich. You talking about that, that bitch's yeast infection? Oh, yeah, bro. Good Lord have mercy. I swear to God. Yeah, she's probably from Wisconsin. Sick. All right. <laughs> someone's got the radio on near their phone. Who was the last call me? Wait, hold up. What? Mama's I boy, is that somebody, you? Somebody's got some shit going on, bro. DJ Mama's boy, is that you? Oh God! I'm not doing nothing. Uh huh. Oh God! Uh -huh. Damn, I knew you were on the board. It's Tony's <laughs> fault. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> D, this is uh, we got DJ Mama's boy on the line now. This is DJ Mama's boy. No. Uh, How many damn people we got up here? I Word, know, man. man. <laughs> Oh, Why are you like mama, good thing? No, bro, is your mom like extra nice and like knows how to cook and stuff? Like, that's all the matter, right? <laughs> right, like that's like, that's, I, I, you know, if, if mom yes. was always in your name, your mom would be like nice as fuck and cool as shit. Hey, hold up, hold up, I gotta do this. Okay, oh, no. DJ Mama's boy's mother has her red wings, I asked her. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> Back to the red wings again. I have mine. Oh. Oh. This ain't right anyway. Uh oh. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> He's over there rethinking this now. He's like, shit. Oh, I'm, so <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> dude. I really didn't know. <laughs> Hey man, this it, this reminds me of insight for the insane a lot, man. You know what I'm saying for sure, dog. Talking <laughs> crazy shit and and so man, you gotta you gotta change the time you do that. Fucking that. What's up? You gotta change the times you do the insight because I only get a, I only get to hear it like every other week. Oh man, yeah, dog. Well. I don't, you know, I don't even know why Sundays came about. I think it was like the only day of the week that I literally had free, in a way. Yeah. So now I have no day free. But unfortunately, lately we've kind of put a pause on Insight for the Insane uh, so I can catch up on getting this mixtape done. And uh, we're coming back, though, on Sunday, February 28th with a special guest interview with Zug Island, man. So I'm really fucking out of it. Hell yeah. I think that's going to be You ain't fucking lying, man. Yeah, yeah man. It's going to be uh, a radio live and say for the insane, bro. Definitely check it out, man. It's it's uh, an experience. <laughs> <laughs> And shout out to my Insight for the Insane family, man. Brandon X, Riddles of Higher Power, and fucking my brother from another mother, Young Ghost, a.k.a. Saw, man. Like, those are my dudes, man, for sure. Hey, listen, it's been a couple for me. I haven't seen them. You know, we're, we're pushing. Let me see. What time did we start easy? Um, 
11. 10 old. 10 old. Why 11 05? Oh man, yeah. we're, only, we're only going on two hours here. Not e uh, like 19 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, I ain't I'm a happy mother. I'm getting high. How the hell? Did Satanic Satanic you win this round, but I'll be back. I will be back. How do you figure it's 142? He's been on for two hours and 42 minutes. I was going to say, what's that my phone? It's two hours and 42 minutes. Wait, how long have we been on? Hold up. Two hours and 42 minutes. Okay, we can't get off. You gotta be satanic. Then you can rub it in next time we talk to him. How <laughs> <laughs> much longer right, is right. I'm actually just happy, happy as hell I talked to him when I got off work. Easy, you gotta have some other questions. Come on, let, let's get... Let's oh, get I, got, I got all kinds of questions. I mean, uh, hell, we can... I got one too Damn. here. He can rap. Oh, yeah, can you like play that. any instruments? Did you grow up playing guitar, drums, flute, violin? No, I ain't no. grow up playing shit. I tried to play. I tried to play drums once. Um, my cousin taught me how to play. Uh, where he goes there by the Misfit Stars. So that's all I know how to play on guitar. But like. Piano, I don't know how to play piano. And drums, I tried to like have drum lessons in middle school, but the fucking instructor pissed me off. Always yell at me because he know he knew I wasn't practicing. So I'm like, man, fuck this shit, it sucks anyway. So he yeah, so I was like, I didn't, I didn't do any of that. But like, uh, my little brother Dustin, um, he's 15 now, and he literally, when he was like eight, learned, taught himself. Out of the piano, like when he was eight, it was the craziest shit. And actually, might have been a little younger, dude, around six or eight. So I was in there and was like, "Yo," he was like, "Damien, check this out." And I was like, "What's up, Dustin?" Me, the Exorcist, on piano, fucking self-taught. And I was like, <laughs> in my mind, I'm thinking this is fucking incredible. But I'm like, no, nah, you ain't gonna surpass me, bro. I'm your big brother, okay? Six or not? And I was like, yeah, that's all right. Could have did better. So, that's how that story. <laughs> now, I just want to verify this. Satanic's runtime for the interview is 84 minutes and 56 seconds. Oh, so it's an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah, that's not the right interview. Oh, I know where the other one is. I don't want to send them out. I can't even say what the fuck. You know where uh, the other one yeah, is? Yeah, um, yeah. um, Easy. Where, where are my old interviews at? I don't want to send them uh, out. The porn site? <laughs> X videos. Yeah, well, that's what I was about to say. X videos. I'm going to go later, man. Is we're plugging right now? Is that <laughs> <laughs> no. Yours is going on Juggle or News, but before yeah, that. Xvideos.com and type in electric eel in the search. If anybody no. Oh, 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 boy. <laughs> <laughs> but. Hey. I'm YouTube. I'm ex YouTube took 2,000 videos. And I had the pee thing on one night, and he was joking around. He's like, well, your shit can't get flagged on a porn site. And we were fucking joking around. I got to thinking about it, and I went and checked out X videos. Uploaded a fucking interview to there. There's no flag button. So I got like 45 videos, interviews, up on fucking X videos. So <laughs> Cause yeah, nobody can fuck with them. Like you said, nobody can fuck with Yeah. There's no copyright shit. There's no flag button. Your shit's safe. Right, exactly. That's crazy, though. <laughs> I mean, you would be like, hey, man, go to X videos and check out my interviews. You might get some couple different responses. But, I mean, hey, that's that's not a bad idea, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, right, that easy. So all you dark ass fans out there, I just now seen something on Facebook that was really dope. The original Misfits of Hip Hop t-shirt design is being, is being restocked on Friday. Yes, so it's Friday? That was As a well. dope ass That was a dope ass shirt and I'm definitely gonna order one if Damien hasn't grabbed all the good sizes. As well as that's not the only throwback that's coming out this Friday. We also have the Dark Half Eat Flesh uh, shirts coming back as well. This is the Dark Half Eat Flesh shirts with the Cannibal Sandwich, um, which is a delicious looking sandwich. Um, 
that'll be yeah available for purchase this Friday. So that's gonna be dope for sure, man. Uh, I didn't even I just seen that this day when I was like, oh, what the fuck? I found out when everybody else found out and shit. I was like, oh, that's that's, that's the one that you were wearing in the uh, dead and dying video, wasn't it? Yes, exactly. Dope. That's a dope shirt, yeah. I'm excited, yeah, man. excited about that Misfits of Hip Hop one, man, because that was a dope ass design. Thank you, bro. Yeah, like I said, man, that's, that's actual, like, that's our ode to the Misfits. You know, a lot of people use that fucking logo just because of, they, they think it's trendy. They're like, it's trendy, and they just use it to use it. They don't really even listen to the Misfits or give a fuck about them. You know what I'm saying? And that's what's good. When we made that shirt, it's not being fucking trendy or we're trying to be cool. You know, we actually, I actually grew up. So. Yeah. That's, that's dope because like, when I first started doing my voice of the Misfits thing, the guy that was making my logo said something about that and I'm like, Lou, I'm like, no, 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 no. I was like, that's not me. I was like, my Misfits is totally different from what, the, what you're thinking. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about like outcast, like actual misfits. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. And he was he, he was wanting to throw in that whole misfits, you know, like the the their logo, and I'm like, no, hell no, I'm not doing that. You know what I mean? That's I just thought he was wrong. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we got we totally went with a whole different idea with that voice of the misfit shit. So, um, Damien, I gotta give you old lady props. I love the flyer. Lord, thank you, man. Yeah, uh, my wife of eleven years, Tina Bingham. Um, she does all the graphic design for us now. Uh and she's been doing it actually since the real American Horror Story. The real, or let me spit that out. The real American Horror Story. <laughs> That's funny. The real American Horror Story, Volume One. Um, she did all the fucking graphic design for that, and has been doing it since. Um, she actually, the, what she just finished is so fucking dope. Is the collage? There's going to be a mural um, when you open uh, Gino Culture. It's a beautiful curse. There's going to be like a collage of of Gino pictures and the way she put it together fucking amazing like it's a tearjerker for real once you open that fucking them pages up you're gonna be like damn you know definitely a beautiful life man for sure and a beautiful life remembered I don't so, uh, yeah fucking all the cool flyers for Insight for the Insane all the flyers for Insight for the Insane um yeah all that so, definitely probably well, hang on that bit yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, my bad. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm going to take a dab uh, for Tommy Necro and Tina Bingham right now. Because so, I said I can take the fast one for Tommy, too, and I don't think I took it. <laughs> yeah, he did. He's like, make sure he takes one for me. Uh, right, yeah. That's one for Tommy and Tina. Yeah. He did, actually, she did three on a meat hook star, too. Put that out there, but yeah, like I said, everything basically from the real American Horror Story there and Unheard Volume One on, she's done. That's some good shit. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, yeah. oh, I do have another question. Um, I know I had another homie I DJed with on another radio. Um, went by Riot. Said he was on stage with you at one time. Ryan, who? Riot. R Y slash I T. Uh oh, who we lose? We lost easy. If it's like um, raging Ryan. Oh, like my that, bad, man. homie. We cut out um riot. Like R Y slash I T. Oh, Riot. Riot. Like like the dude that rhymes with their uh, the dude that rhymes with Diabolic. Yes, Riot. Yep. Yeah, man, Riot. Yeah, dog, he's fucking dope for real. I like the shit that he dropped on Gator Boy, man. DJed with him on okay. another radio at one time. All right, we lost Easy Six. We're so together. Um, I wonder what show that was. 
Okay. Uh, I'm trying to remember which one he said it was. It would have been about seven <coughs> months ago. I want to say around that. Oh, yeah, po possibly, bro. And then, like, no offense, though, I don't remember. Um, but yeah, but shout out to Ice though, man. I, I like his fucking style. And like I said, uh, him and Diabolic work well together, man. I like what they dropped on Gator Boy, for sure. You back, Easy? Hey, what a yeah, classic hey. fucking album, for sure. It was definitely a good album. Can I chime in on one? Go for it. Uh, I had a quick question for you, D. Um, or with uh, with D, or with uh, I'm sorry, Gino. Oh uh, yeah, man, Spooky. Uh, yeah, man, that's not. Yeah, we did that track. Well, Gino did that track. Yeah, Gino did. He and Gruesome, um, the, as well. Yeah. Actually, uh, a version of that song with Dark Half is going to be on uh, last Dark Half album. Yeah, he was he, he was telling me about it. I, I was speaking to him the other day because I'm actually Snickers. I was talking to him. And he's gonna be one of my first interviews. Nice. But um, no, I just wanted to kind of you know ask yeah. you you know, uh, to be honest with you. What's your what do you think about him? You know, what's your opinion? Because I think that damn song is bit um I think it was the one hell of a song. <laughs> Yeah, he came a hell of a long way, man, you know what I'm saying? And he's got, uh, got Grusom helping him along. I don't know if him and Grusom uh, uh, still do a lot of music together, but I know at one point in, uh, Grusom was kind of mentoring him. <coughs> and uh, Spooky came a long way, man. He definitely listened to Grusom, so... Um, yeah, man. Shout out to Spooky Dog. Sure. He's a good dude, and that track is dope, man. Um, I, I think it's uh, Make or Mine or Make You Mine. It's Make You Mine. I yeah, make, right. it's make it's Make You Mine. <laughs> yeah, that track is fucking ill, and if I'm not mistaken, there's a remix coming out soon or something. Yeah, so. that's yeah, that's what he was telling me about. There's a remix coming out and remastered and all that stuff. And Actually, that was one of the, to be honest, that was probably one of the best songs that got me into him. You know, I mean, I already knew Gino, but... I heard that, and I was like, shit, this motherfucker's all right, you know? I just kind of want to get your opinion on it. I don't like that spooky guy, man. No, I'm joking. No, <laughs> Yeah, fuck him. Snickers. Yo. How many songs have we played? One. <laughs> no, we no, no, no. We need to we need to play the, we need to play that one track that I love, man. I love that fucking track, man. Is uh the uh, one with Sarah Amazing, uh what's it called? Yeah, man, the sun's gonna shine. Yeah. The sun's gonna shine. Yeah, this that track no, is amazing. I, I, I think what you gotta play is are you ready? That's dope too. I'm think sorry. We're, we're, well, I came in late. Not so long. Late as usual. Dude, well, I gotta work, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I am working. Well, I got uh, another job to make money. All right, we're gonna cut over to a song. <laughs> the sun's gonna shine. One of 606's ones he overkilled on the radio earlier today when he was DJing. Bury the mainstream. I gotta remember that. This is easy shit tonight. Go ahead, easy. Take it over. Bury the mainstream, bitch. Bury the mainstream. And behind the scenes, we're talking about marketing Jingleberry Jam. Exactly. And we wanted to promote that shit. <laughs> no, my bad. I didn't mean to cut any off like that. My bad. <laughs> no, you good. Hell, if I get Damien Quinn's promotion on it, it, it will be the shit. Well, I mean, I can cut that. <laughs> like the you later. a cheesy ass smile. Me with like a cheesy ass smile and my thumbs up with the dingleberry jam jar on the other hand. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dave Quinn and I support dingleberries. <laughs> <laughs> jam. Just dingleberry jam. Not dingleberries in general, but the jam. Oh, cool. Huh? <laughs> so easy. Yeah, yeah, man. You got a couple more questions and then some shout outs. He is exactly four minutes from beating Sectanic Senegal. 
And it was funny that we were just joking about that earlier, and it actually came and to be. It so. actually happened. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to happen, okay. dog. And, and you know what? That's because I'm comfortable with you guys. That's why. <laughs> That's the way it is. Make sure we cut that part out. out. He likes that peanut butter. And make sure we cut that part out. I'm going to need that part uh, cut out when he just said that a while ago, so we can uh, sample that in my new tape, my new mixtape. <laughs> what part is that? The dingleberry? <laughs> no, the part where he said I'm so comfortable with you guys. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear Easy uh, Pearl in the song now. That fucking Featuring baby. Featuring baby and queen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what, dog? Hey, you can you can use it all day long, but if it you know it pops off and blows up, dog, we're gonna have to you know maybe talk some royalties down the road. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> hey, I got you, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> and what is this song gonna be called? That's what I want to know. He needs a title. <laughs> Simply comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> like, it could be comfortable, or I guess it could be called simply comfortable, whatever you, whatever you think it easy does. Hey, as long as it's weekend, I don't care, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm comfortable with the way this shit, so that's the problem, dog, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I'm just excited that we, uh, we're going to break Satanic's record with my homie uh, Damien Quinn and uh... <laughs> Sick! Well, I didn't know, I didn't know it could be done. I feel well, like I can do that and accomplish something. I, I'm going to be like, yo, Satanic, check this out. He broke your record. The very first, you know, the very hey. first... The very first... Like, hey, man. You know, maybe maybe I haven't earned my Red Wings, but I broke Satanic's record. So, I feel good about myself too, but... Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> the very first day of the mainstream, the actual of me being back on Wednesdays, we broke the fucking record. Exactly. Nice. Damien and Clay. And there was a movie we, 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 we intentionally, unintentionally did not um, go into this interview with any intentions intentionally of it being a three and whatever hour interview so that's cool <laughs> now now when people ask later what is the longest interview you've ever had on a ground wicked radio bury the mainstream right dude it's gonna be the longest you know what I'm saying cause I expected like 20 minutes bro you know what I'm saying and here we are dog so yeah if anybody ever has it dog I'm sure it's gonna be the case and if anybody tries to do that, I'm going to be like, no, I'm just going to cut the interview short. <laughs> and if somebody does actually try to boot it, I'm going to cut it short like a minute before they can. Like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to go. Honestly, <laughs> I've listened to quite a few other interviews, and about 25 minutes into the interview, the artist is ready to get off. Like, that's what I kind of I figured. You know what I'm saying? I was like, 20 minutes, a half an hour, that's what I figured this interview would be. I didn't know... Um, we were, we were gonna go, um, that one. But you have been having fun. We're all having fun right now. That's what it's about, dude. That's why. That's why we're here. I agree. Today. So easy. How about them shout outs, homie? He's beat it. Yeah. He's officially beat it. By three minutes so far. Yeah, yeah so. Now, why are you asking me? Why don't you ask him? He said it right there. Well, I mean, it's your show, you know. You gotta hey. finish, her up. finish her up. Hey, <laughs> you're the co-host. You can do what you want. Well, you know. Okay, I guess. So, well, you're nice. To be your co-host. I don't let my co-host do shit. What's up, bro? Right. I mean, it is his show. So, <laughs> I'm just kind of <laughs> sitting here because once he told me it was you, I'm like, yep. I'll I'll run I'll run the computer for the night. <laughs> So, homie, go ahead. This is your time to do some shout-outs. I was going to say uh, normally a radio drop, but we already got that. So, go ahead, homie. Do some shout-outs. Drop some links to your music, any upcoming projects, music videos, CDs. Go for it. Well, first of all, I want to thank you guys for having me on. Um, I've been listening to your show for a while now, and I've been listening to your show for a while now. 
first and foremost, man, I want to say uh, rest in peace to uh, Brash 10 and Gino Cult shit. Um, if you get the chance, man, definitely pick up a beautiful curves. Uh, Gino Cult shit, TP, it's, it's fucking, it's beautiful. I mean, there's no other way to describe it, so definitely go check that out. Um, uh, for me, I'll be working on uh, this mixtape, Eyes Without a Face. So, I mean, be on the lookout for that. That should be coming out April or May, I'm hoping. And, uh, shit, yeah, I mean, to find me is, uh, you know, still, uh, if you like trying to get in contact with me, you can, you know, look up Damien and Quinn on Facebook, you know, look in the search of Damien and Quinn. Or, uh, you know, I'm still under all the Dark Half pages, uh, Facebook.com slash The Real Dark Half, uh, you know, Twitter. Dot com slash real dark half, uh, fucking YouTube dot com slash one dark half. Um, yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, big shout out to fucking everybody on our list. Uh, the Godfather Scrub. You know, if it wasn't for Scrub, I don't even know if I'd be alive, man. And that's real talk. Like, that's that's my brother for life. I look up to them so fucking much, man. So, uh, big shout out to Scum and, and I hope the Lobotomy Project, uh, uh, Fuck, dog, is it meets everybody's standards, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm mean, gonna put a lot behind that project, so I don't know. Uh, shout out to fucking Tom Murphy and uh, my brother Lynch running the Gore Hop shop. Those dudes are just day in, day out, making sure that shop is legit and the homegirl Rex. So, I mean, you know, everybody at LSP, man. Um, Static G's got an album coming out, too, dude. Uh, all out of normal. Check that out. Static is so gross. Like, if you haven't heard of Static G yet, please go check him out, man. Like, that's my fucking bro, bro. And his music is fucking dope. He's got a track called All Out of Smoke right now. You can look up on SoundCloud. So, go check that out. Static G's the man. Um... Yeah, man, I'm good. I'm good. I know my brother Bloody Ruckus has an album coming out, uh, Be My Bloody Valentine EP, I think it's called, and, uh, yeah, dog, you know what I'm saying, so. Hell yeah, hell yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Nice. Shout out to Rick Dog. <laughs> All right, my bad. And as we told y'all at the beginning of this fucking interview, I hope all you motherfuckers still have your L's up because if you're taking them down, <laughs> I, <had> the whole <laughs> <laughs> I got my damn L stacked so freaking high you can't see them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a whole fucking three and a half hours. Your L's better than in the air. Don't well, worry, I got the duct tape around my head. I don't that down. My finger be that shit out. Too. Oh, no, I said it, bro. I put it out there. It's in the air now. I put it out in the air, dog. You didn't have your health up all three and a half hours. You might not be true. You might not be 100, bro. <laughs> okay, <laughs> oh, it has been up for four fucking I think that'd be fucked up. Wouldn't your arm dog would be stuck in that position, man, if somebody really did that? Or you'd have to, like, I don't know. It would, you'd probably, like, have to get it amputated, right? No, I don't know about that, but that would be cool to see. They'd be hurt, and that's for damn sure. Hey, guys, there's a hundred... There's 127 hours left until Deadpool comes out. Yeah, man, I can't fucking wait for Friday, dude. I can't. I ain't going to get to see that shit either. Fuck y'all. <laughs> I probably won't be able to play until Monday, but I'm good. Uh, yeah, Deadpool. All right, easy if you I do dabs in movie sequels now. That's my thing, bro. It's taking the vape pan in. So I'm not really doing dabs. It's more like vaping your rocks. But I'm like, fuck it, bro. Just vape the rocks right there. Be right in the movie people, bro. I get high in the movie people. And dope. For real, I see Star Wars getting high. Like, you guys, life is great right now. I do want to say before <laughs> we hop off, definitely uh, get with us, homie. Um, we'll get a commercial. Oh, fuck, sorry. I'm just flipping through. I, I walk out. My, I gotta say this. I'm not racist or prejudiced or nothing, but I walk out. My old lady's watching midgets driving fucking dirt bikes. Kid dirt bikes with training wheels, and they're fucking wrecking them. I, I, I ha I'm sorry, I had to laugh. I'm like, what the fuck are you watching? And I'm flipping through funny. Facebook, and there's the video. I, uh, I was just gonna say, man, you shouldn't laugh at uh, little people on dirt bikes, bro. All right, <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> 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 I'm not laughing at little people. 
What is the real problem? That's what they have for a fucking reality show. I'm just like, wow. I don't watch TV much, so. I, apparently, I'm not missing much. Dude, actually, Brandon X, uh, Insight for the Insane, co host of Brandon X. Um, he's got a fetish with midgets, weird, or weird people in my bed. Um, yeah, it's fucking weird, bro. Like, he's real, yeah, he's about it, bro. Like, he, he's about it. It's like, I don't know if I'd be about it, dog. You know what I'm saying? I can't say. My Maybe, wife, you know, my wife later, left me for a midget. Later, so, you want a good laugh, Damien? My wife yeah, left me for a midget about two years ago. No joke, straight up. No joke. I don't know if that's a good laugh, bro. If I'd be like, yo, bro, okay, I'd be like, and, and not even on ovation, not even on ovation, but I'm like, what is he packing? I just told my parents. Because he used to be a porn star, me. so, I mean, oh, wait, wait, wait. he's doing something. Bro. Wait, wait. Wait, exactly, what are you. Dog. <laughs> I'd be like, <laughs> hey, how am I going to do that? I'd be like, really? I'm like, you're oh, yeah, cold outside. Don't look at me like that, yo. Know? Exactly, yo. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Man, fuck. No comment. I'm just hey. quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I want to say something real quick. All right. Hi. What is All right. So, easy. How do you want to cut your show off, homie? Um, no, I think Bubbles had a question there. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I was, it was just a statement. Um, I'm a real LSP fan because who the hell paints LSP in their own blood? They. That's no way. You know what that is real? And I would say that that's real. That's real as good. So yeah. Well, that's kind of freaky. But... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a this is a free but this is a no choice zone, right? Exactly. No freaks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on, I, on Facebook uh, a couple weeks ago, I asked people to, I was like, if you really down with LSP, you'll carve it in your face. Nobody did it. And, and, and Hell no, no, I, I saw that shit, I ain't. I saw that shit, I ain't. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's what I'm saying, a part of me was hoping that people wouldn't, but there was this other big part of me that was hoping somebody would, maybe just one person, maybe. <laughs> it's all, you know. You can show your dedication in another way, you don't have to do that. It was funny as hell on some of the reactions I was reading on there. Some of the people were like, David, you, sh you shouldn't say that because you've got people that will actually do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, nobody fucking did, so. <laughs> I was wrong. my body, but not my face. Not my face. Hey, I'll catch you guys later on. Hey, hey, hey the chest is cool. Uh, oh, that's what I wanted to ask you, uh, Damien. Did you see yeah. the Flash cartoon music video for Creepy Pasta for Razakel? No, there, she's on Creepy Pasta. Yep, that's her song. It's her for what? Easy Six Hundred Six and What's that Psychotic. Called? I made a I music video. I'm talking about the website. Is that a web that's a website too, though, isn't it? Yeah, actually, yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah, that is, dude. Wow, no shit. But uh, no, I didn't know about that song. What, who's on it? Which one is that? Go ahead, easy. Uh, that's the one that I was on. Um, me and Psychotic on that one on her uh, Halloween mixtape. <coughs> Okay, well, who was the track? Are you on the track of Bloody Ruckus? Uh, no. Huh. Who, who am I thinking of that was on the track of Bloody Ruckus? Then? I got that mixed up. I'm gonna have to go back and check it out. I was on Creepy Pasta. Um, let's see. I don't remember who was on the wall of Bloody Ruckus. I can't remember either. Huh. <laughs> no, it was me and Psychotic were on Creepy Pasta. Nah, fuck that. 
fucking uh, psychotic to homie too, man. Shout out to psychotic for sure. Um, he's always been down with the call crew and down with fucking supporting the movement of call bitch. So I, I gotta definitely give a shout out to fucking psychotic. Oh, yeah. All my motherfuckers just buy me Coney's, dog. Nothing but Coney's all day. Coney's with everything. Yes, I eat the mustard. Yes, I eat the onions. Give me that shit, dog. <laughs> hey, Coney's is where it's at, bro. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Whenever you get down here, is, uh, whenever we get a show booked down here in Cincinnati, man, we're going to have to get you some Cincinnati chill, man. The Coney. I'm not with that, bro. My wife likes chili more than I do, but I'll eat it, you know what I'm saying? I'm wanting a barbecue and shit, dog. What's up with the barbecue? Damn it, hey, we we this way where I live. live. It's negative 25 right now. Outside. Damn. I'm, uh, maybe 15 minutes from Canada. Up in New York. All right, who's got all that uh, static like that? But yeah, I'm uh, not far from Molly Goosham, actually. Bro, New York is New York is uh, dope, man. New York is uh, uh, shot good pizza. And when I was on the Twisted tour, the Welcome to the Underground tour, um, the best shiny food I ate in that tour was in Clifton Park, New York. So that's crazy, but that's real. I live an hour from there, homie. Clifton Park. Where there's this little Chinese restaurant that was next to the venue, and the dudes in there were cool as fuck in the food. Chinese bomb. One, it's called. China One, it's called here. Yeah. Bro, that shit is bomb, dog. Like, that shit is fucking, that shit was dank. Um, probably the best Chinese food I had on that tour, for real, because I had tried a couple other places, and uh, no, it wasn't that. So, I got a better one for you. From 2006 to 2014. I cooked at that Chinese place. Oh, no shit. Word. Yeah, man. That place is dope. That place is dope. Easy used to watch me. I'd be DJing on a radio, cooking on cam. I'd be cooking fucking Chinese while I'm DJing. Maybe I made some fucking food. Who knows? <laughs> Damn, that's fucking crazy, God. That's fucked up, actually. That's pretty funny. Don't worry, I, I probably left the cat, the, the, well, no, I'd have to say dog. They don't eat cat, they eat dog, so I probably left it out that night. <coughs> I'll try it once. I'll try anything once. What, when when was your tour? No homo, but let's not get weird, but I would like to eat, um, I'd try like fucking like seahorse and shit. I'll try that. <laughs> you know, that's the thing they eat in Japan, bro. Like they sell seahorses on a stick. And it's like a delicate, like, not a delicacy, but it's like a, uh, kind of like how we would buy a fucking corn dog here or something, you know what I'm saying? So, Florida. I would try that. You can get it in Florida, actually, I've had it. Really? Is it good? Eh, it's rubbery. Well, I like it's weird. I'll have to put some shit back. The weirdest thing I've ever had was rusk, uh, muskrat. With dandelion lime leaves. You ain't from Damn, the top, man. Man. Now, now what are we talking about? Some real stuff? I'm trying it once, bro. I'm trying it once. Me too, yeah. And it's a fucking suck. What is the weirdest thing you've ever had to eat? Uh, I think I guess the weirdest thing I ever ate was, um, a uh, goat tongue. No, mm. not bad. Yeah, that's like. I guess, like, no, I haven't, like, ate Rocky Mountain oysters or nothing like that. <laughs> I have. They're not bad. Rocky Mountain. They're actually... Yeah, they're good. good. Well, they're good, dog. No, they really are. I'm not going to sit here and lie. They really are. Oh, it is some good shit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Come on, bro. It's like, we can sit here and act like we're not going to eat buffalo tactical, but guess what? That shit's bottom. They so, are. They're really good. I don't good. know. Oh, my God. I don't care what anybody says. If they had them, they wouldn't diss them. Hell, I've had raccoon and all kinds of shit like that. Pickled pig food? I mean, yeah, I haven't really had many exotic animals. I eaten squirrel before and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, I don't think squirrel I is normal around here in the south. Um, I've had, I've had raccoon, I've had possum. Possum's not bad. Porcupine, have you ever had that? It's really fucking greasy. Yep. Man, I'm from the south. Come on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> North Carolina, they actually have... A restaurant. Actually, I'm in North South Carolina, Carolina, but I was raised in North Carolina, so yeah. Yeah, close enough. 
I used to live in Kingsbury. Now, try that. I, I heard this, this uh, place in Chicago that serves, because Chicago's known for their fucking sausages and all that shit, you know what I'm saying? And there's this place that serves exotic animals, like fucking possums and snakes, and, but it's all like a sausage form, though. I'd try that shit, dog. I'd try like a snake sausage, whatever, you know? That sounded really gay, but yeah, I'd try it, dog. <laughs> <laughs> easy, easy. There you go. There's for your song. So, like, cut that out. So, like, cut that out. <laughs> hey, we're still in the house, so. I never cut off the air. I'd probably say that would be a snake sausage or like an elk sausage. I'd fuck with that shit, bro. I mean, it's like... Some people are like, you know, I think they have crocodile too. Crocodile or alligator or whatever. That'd be, that'd be, that'd be Crocodile I haven't had. That's one thing I do want to try. Back. Actually, uh, when Fiasco and Dreddy uh, was in town, okay, shout out to Fiasco and Dreddy, but Fiasco, bro, if it wasn't for him, bro, that's a sound of that, like, you know what I'm saying, dog? Like, Man, uh, big shout out to Fiasco. But when he was here um, for Gino's memorial um, in Chino and whatnot, um, uh, he went, I don't know where the fuck he went, but he showed up with this, this big container of alligator for Like, we went to the hotel room to go talk to Stun and shit, and there was Fiasco gripping on this, like, white styrofoam container of, like, a full of alligator tail, and uh, I ate some of it, and um, it was delicious. So shout out to Fiasco. Um, okay. You, well, you know Spooky, right? Uh, Spooky, uh... Was it really tough? Or <laughs> soft? Real, no, it was, it was, it was a little tough. It was a little tough, but it wasn't as tough as you thought, you know, you think it would be, it wasn't like, you know. Now here's uh, one thing I let you guys have, have never tried, because I don't think you have them down south. Moose. Yeah, you see, I haven't, but that place in Chicago has moose sausages, though. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> it's good you say moose knuckles? Moose. As in, I don't know, they're not a deer. I guess they're a deer. No, moose ain't a deer. Hey, light class, no, class. Well, I like to call him Klaus instead of class, because every time I interview him, I'll say that just out of the blue in the middle of the interview. See if he notices it, and he'll be like, fuck you and your reindeer. I like camel toe. Class holes. I like camel toe. Yeah, so. Shout out to the class holes, bro. Class is on me, man. Good shit. Good guy. I don't know about y'all, but how about you? You got like camel? I'm a fan of camel toe. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Damn camel. Wow. The oysters, <laughs> they're close too, you know. They're kind of shaped yeah, like that. Uh, every time I look at an oyster, I'm like, yep. It's after dudes you act, man. Good shit. Yeah, man, we're getting no face like a mother. <laughs> I bet I am too uh, a lot of people over here they're like I have six people over here like I thought you guys were getting off like five times ago I'm like yeah you know no for real you know what's crazy is when you said that though I was just thinking to myself I think I already did all my shout outs and shit right <laughs> that's what it's all for marijuana yeah about I think 30 minutes ago something like that but shout out to Young Grim. Been tuning in the whole time. Over there laughing. Like, I thought you guys were getting off. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Young Grim. Gotta get him on for an interview at some point. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. But, alright. I think we're gonna hop off. I gotta be up yeah. in, in three hours. Big shout out to Big shout out yeah, to Ray 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 tonight. Uh, man, y'all are good, man. Thank you. Thank you, homie. Anytime. Um, like I said, cross promo. Definitely. Let's get that done. Get with easy. Yeah, all day long. All day long, man. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, one more time, man. Shout out to the Cold Crew. All shit for life. LST for life. We can risk Hey, hey. Get those L's up, boys. Yeah.
Oh yeah, put the motherfucking L's up and be back here my next week. Fly every damn day. day. DJ Quinn, you gotta look out for eyes without a face. New mixtape, Tony and Quinn. And while you're waiting on that, go ahead and go get that three on the me hook right now. Oh yeah, that shit. Check it out and uh, be back. Be back here next Wednesday night at 10 p.m. We got motherfucking DJ Clay coming on, so y'all motherfuckers come back and check it out. We'll be spinning that uh, Damien Quinn and Dark Half like like as usual. So uh, yeah, come back and check us out. Bury the motherfucking mainstream. Everyone have a good night. Boop boop. Um, from the East Coast, Spooky? A Spooky Z, like, fucking, uh, um... He did, he did his best.